Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, with me as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. Absolutely, we're back. We're mm. doing it. We're deep into Madame Webuary. God, you got to be, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. In this economy? Yeah. You're, you're wasting money not being in a Madame <laughs> Webuary. You know, you're throwing money away. It's like they're stealing from you. Did you get in early? Did you go on Valentine's Day? You could have gone early? No. No, Did you take anybody special? No. You don't consider yourself special? You don't value your own company no, that's a great and yourself point. as a person? No. Okay, no, yeah. Absolutely. No, nah, me neither. To that of you all, mate. Great. <laughs> Good. As long as we're all on the same page. We certainly are. Uh, it's a big week this week because, of course, we are going to be talking about the latest Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel Movies movie, mm, Madam that's right. Web. It's Madam Web. It's, we- it's Madam Web. You already spum. It's. <laughs> God. The- just. We're in it, man. You know? We certainly are. We're in a new era. And it's just gone. It's gone exactly as I thought it would and in, and in new and fresh, interesting ways. That's right. We'll get into it. It's gone tropo. Yeah, it really has. There's our time codes below if you just want to jump straight it's to that. It's gone off chops. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, before we get there, we've got to talk about the, the, the record-breaking Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. Was it really record-breaking? It ro- broke a record, Mason. Huh. Yeah. Some new release dates for the Thunderbolts and Fantastic Four, speaking of. Oh, that's big Fantastic Four. I, mean, that, that, I mean, that's almost... Capable of eclipsing Madame Webuary. You reckon? No. No, I don't think no, so I was, either. I was lying to myself there. It's... The <laughs> I mean, we got the cast, which we knew. Uh, but well, we, we didn't know. We pretty much well, we knew. knew. We knew. Somebody on Twitter broke it, like, yeah. months ago. <laughs> yeah, six months ago. And we also got, like, the first kind of promotional image, and there's a bit of information in there which we'll get into. Uh, we also got some rumours concerning a uh, Midnight Suns movie. Ooh. Trailers ahoy for Godzilla X Kong, Invincible Season 2, Part 2, and X Men 97. He Man news. He Man. He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Wow. And uh, a live action Miles Morales movie or situation might be sooner than you think. How, though? After this? After Madame Webuary? <laughs> no, this is disconnected. Oh, is it? Okay. It's in a separate universe we can't access and they can't get out. Because I was going to say, I mean. After this, obviously, there's going to be a lot of Madam Web sequels and stuff. Where are they going to find at the time in their production schedule to make a Miles Morales movie? <laughs> Does anyone even know who that is? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, if you did, you'd go in to see Madam Web and yeah. would just, uh, that information would disappear from your brain. That's all you'd want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's kick things off with this. Uh, so Deadpool and Wolverine, Mason, it broke a record. I don't know if you heard this. I don't think it did. The no, way, it did. Every aspect of what you're saying suggests, and the way you're saying it suggests that it didn't break any record. No, it is the biggest trailer of all time, with 365 million views in the, the first 24 hours. That beat out, well, No Way Home beat out Endgame, okay. and this beat out No Way Home. So my, You've got a little twinkle in your eye. There's yeah. no twinkle, Mason. Mm. This is straight shooting facts. Wow. Yeah. So it's big. It looks like it's going to be big. It's probably going to be... Well, it's R-rated. I was going to say it could be a billion-dollar movie. Mm-hmm. It could still be a billion-dollar movie right. being R-rated. But uh, it looks to be there's a lot of hype generated. And you know, and we love hype. And Here we, at the Weekly Planet, we love it. <laughs> we love it. And we released a video uh, earlier this week uh, that Matt edited, which was the scene of the podcast where we talked about it, and the title was something like, is this going to save the MCU, et cetera? Uh-huh. And a lot of people are saying, no, I'm going to see it, but no, this is just a <laughs> one-off situation. And it might be. And, my, and some people are also like, I don't want to see it. I'm not seeing these anymore. And it's like, I think you're going to see it. I think you're here. And I think you will see it. <laughs> yeah, how'd you find it? Oh, just found yourself on YouTube. Just found yourself on YouTube. Having opinions about comic book movies. About not even looking at the Deadpool trailer, but looking at stuff adjacent to the Deadpool trailer. That's really interesting. Dude. Mm. Dude. So, yeah, this is going to be a big movie, even if it's dreadful. Deadful. Full. I don't know. So, there you go. But let's move things along to this. Because the Thunderbolts, Mason, has been rescheduled from July 25th of next year uh-huh. to May 2nd. They're bringing it up. They're bringing it up. Which means they're going to have to start filming it at some point. Maybe write a script and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get sure. some people yeah, get involved. Some people. Yeah. You know. Uh, I just, did you see the flutter this week? Because there's that new AI video generating thing. That can... Oh, you're saying they should just make the Thunderbolts Yeah, just do that. that. And it's that weird drone angle just going yeah, through. Yeah, sure. That they're using. Some are interesting. Like I saw one of a chameleon. Yeah, I saw one of a uh, some puppies in the snow. Puppies I in saw. the snow, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's genuinely like impressive technology. But also, I would love to see what the source data on that is. Totally, because maybe the source data is a video of puppies in the snow. Well, exactly. Walling a man. Walling a man. To cut that out. Yeah. There's also one of archaeologists uncovering like a plastic lawn chair. 
Okay, but the, they hadn't figured out the physics of the lawn chair, so they just pick it out, out of the ground mm. and then it just sort of floats along in the air. That's, so I think it'll, I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to develop like surreal images. But again, I, as I understand it, the technology now is limited to one minute. Mm. So they're going to have to do a bunch of them to finish the Thunderbolts. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Yeah. Just do one minute 200 times. That's right. That's 200 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Drone shot, Thunderbolts. <laughs> they're fighting Baron Zemo or he's on the team. Yeah. And there's a helicarrier, and the bad guy is uh, you pick. Yep. You pick, <laughs> you pick AI, pick one. Doesn't yeah. matter. Oh, my goodness. So, look, and this, I think this technology will be mostly useful for companies just wanting B roll. Because I don't think anybody mm. really wants this. Even if it's like absolutely flawless, I don't want to see a movie of this. No, it's not. Because people are saying, well, now I can recreate my shows, I can be like Soprano season, whatever. Why? Don't you want the people who wrote and were in that show mm. to make the show and not just like a weird approximation of... And, and it's, <laughs> it, it'll be dead eyes as well. Yeah, it'll be, of I mean, I mean, And even know, if it's not, like, why do you want this? It's not interesting. No. Yeah. Um, anyway, it is, I mean, this is like the worst version of this that it's ever going to be. It's only going to get better. Oh, that's true. So maybe it will get to the point, but like... Technologically. This, technologically, yeah, but like story-wise, like... Oh, yeah. What, what can you do with this? I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Remember, that, remember that, uh, that somebody released that video and it's like, this is exactly like The Great Gatsby. It's just, you know, look out, Basil Lerman, because we've just made The Great Gatsby. And it's just like people looking at the cat. Like yeah. all these trailers are just people. Oh, somebody did. Somebody was. Somebody made Lord of the Rings. They're like, Lord of, this is more Lord of the Rings by, by Peter Jackson. And again, it's just people. Yeah, like looking elfin off people yeah. looking into yeah. the camera. And, yeah, being like, huh? That, is that all you took from these movies? That's interesting. Patrick Williams. James. I did, it was. Patrick Williams did a thing on it. I don't know if you saw his video because he did a version. He did um, the X-Men one that he did. It was uh, X-Men. Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. And he did all that and he mm. filmed it all and found some locations that Wes Anderson really used and found like period appropriate X-Men costumes and uh -huh. framed it beautifully and whatever. He found them in the garbage. He found them. Yeah, right. yeah. And then, and then he did like, well, what if I just re recreated this now using this AI technology of where it's at? And it's exactly what you're talking about. Just looking at the camera. Yeah. Anyway, well, again, it's only going to get better, but we'll see. Uh, why do we go? Why did we go from Thunderbolts to AI? Because that's how they're going to make it. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so they should make it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that the July 25th release date has now been taken by the Fantastic Four, which also looks to compete with Superman Legacy, which is coming out on the 11th, like now, a few weeks earlier. Yeah, I had a thought about this. Do you think this is? Do you think this is Kevin Feige counter programming to throw to, to sort of uh, you know tip over DC's apple cart, or do you think they're trying to build a like an Oppenheimer situation, a Barbenheimer oh. situation? Like, uh, well, there's 14, 15 ish days between, so I think there's. If they're both good and you want to see them, there's well, room super there. fantastic. Yeah. Like, or fantastic man. I mean, if this was like uh, Godzilla. Man, four man. Four men. Four man. Four man. <laughs> but if it was like Godzilla versus Superman or Godzilla versus Fantastic Four or whatever, people wouldn't think anything of this. It's because they're both superhero movies. It's true. But I mean, my, my thinking would is that these, to me, would be very different. Yeah, and I would see both regardless of doing the show, which is saying something because some of the movies we see, Mason, yes, the few that we've seen this year, I wouldn't see outside of the show. Wow, very interesting, and a betrayal <laughs> of the studio system. We yeah. worked very hard to cultivate a wonderful we had, relationship. We have a beautiful with, relationship. We do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't let us on the Madam Web press tour, but that's, that's only because we didn't ask. And they wouldn't have had us. And they wouldn't. <laughs> and we wouldn't want to do it. And we'd have, only have bad God, questions. God, I think I would at this and point. They would, and they would only give us bad answers. God, yeah, but imagine, though. God, because you see people bringing – you see someone – I think it was from comicbook.com. Did they bring in the meme? Order a comic? And was like, this is the first Madam Web comic. And she's like, D -D -D Dakota Johnson. Yeah, right. She's like, wow, look at this. Yeah, no. <laughs> right, oh, yeah. this is the first edition, uh -huh. is it? Great. Wow. <laughs> it's really fun. Did you own this or was it in the office? No, or? I bought it for this, for this interview. Wow. Can I have it? I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. We'll just leave it on the table. The, yeah. next, <laughs> the next press junket can keep it if they want it. So there you go. She also did a uh, – I've, I've been enjoying some of the, uh, the oh my God, web, yeah. uh, press junket. Uh, Dakota Fanning was asked to name all the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Yes. What did I say? Uh, Fanning. Holland's. Maybe she was too. Yeah, absolutely. She was asked to name all the – Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, and she said, "Spider-Man, here he comes." Yeah. Spider-Man and his back, and the Goblet of Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, good, good for her. I agree. Yeah. I mean, she shouldn't have to promote this. It feels like community service. I know yes. she's in it, but like, yeah. And like legally, she's probably obligated to. But uh -huh. you know, it feels like work. <laughs> sure does. Yeah. 
<laughs> for everybody. But at the same time, don't sign on to one of these movies and then act like you're above it. Yeah, fair or enough. Or do. Or do. If you want to burn some bridges, Again, she's a weird celebrity from celebrity parents. That's true. Of course she's like this. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the cast is confirmed with the Fantastic Four. We already knew this, but Pedro Pascal is Reed Richards. Vanessa Kirby is Sue Storm slash The Invisible Woman. Joseph Quinn, who people might know from Stranger Things, he's Eddie, is Johnny Storm slash The Human Torch. And Ebon Moss, Backrack. Mm-hmm. Back, how do you say that? Bark? I'm saying Backrack. Backrack. Like uh, Bert Backrack. Like Bert Backrack. Uh, is Ben Grimm slash The Thing. Now, I would say, generally speaking, if you look at reactions across the internet, Nobody seems to have a problem with Vanessa Kirby as Invisible Woman. Yep. And absolutely nobody has any problems with Ebon Moss Backrack as The Thing. They're yeah. like, these are good castings. But some people are like, uh, Pedro Pascal, uh, Mr. Fantasy, I don't think so. Oh. Uh, Joseph Quinn, he's a guy. Uh, Stranger Things, I don't think Because he had a week in Stranger Things. Yeah, because he doesn't look like Blonde Chris Johnny Evans. Storm. Yeah. But also, like, just look at any kind of promotional photo of that guy. Yeah. Any kind of, like... GQ photo shoot or whatever. It's going to be looks, okay. He looks like a cool, handsome guy. And even the, the, the promo image, which I do you think they've done like a like a in-house promo shot mm. just in casual clothes and they've, that's been used as a reference to... Oh, good. And then they did the art over the yeah, top. They yeah. traced it, did they? They traced it, yeah. Well, they got AI to trace it. Essentially. Mm. I mean, it does. It's pretty accurate to their likenesses. Yeah. I think they probably did like an in-house thing in Marvel and then they yeah. just gave it to an artist and said... Fix this. Yeah, fix this in post. Well, what is interesting about that is... You know the thing we say? Do that. Fix yeah. it in post. Yeah. You know the thing we say to everybody? <laughs> hey, this coffee uh, that you got me, my, PA, it's a little cold. Can you fix it in post? <laughs> Do you mean put it in the microwave? Fix it in post. Fix it in post. <laughs> fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> fix you in post. <laughs> uh, boy, it's kind of stuffy in here. Could you fix that window in post? Do you mean open the window? <laughs> fix it in post. <laughs> Just fix it in post. It's Marvel. You know what it means? <laughs> Uh, it's hot in here. I'm Kevin Feige. <laughs> oh, it's him. It's Kevin. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it would be. Uh, so anyway, the image was released on Valentine's Day, and it is set in the 1960s, specifically maybe the year 1963, because the Life magazine that the thing is reading is December this December 13th issue with Lyndon B. Johnson on the front cover. Now I, f- I looked up this actual issue. Uh-huh. So I'm like, because you can see the back cover. Okay. In the in the promo. Sh- picture, yes. but the back cover in real life was an ad for Salem cigarettes, which is not <laughs> on the right? back cover, which I'm really mad about, okay. actually. Right. So this also speaks and to... now it's Marvel cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Marvel brand cigarettes, fix a bit post. Um, <laughs> so... Your lungs gone, you, you got some dicky lungs because you smoked too many Marvel cigarettes? Well, fix a bit post. <laughs> so do you think this confirms the initial, at least, 1960s setting? Well, I mean, uh, some people have said... Who? Uh, internet people? Yep. This maybe is just, oh, it's a little bit of art because the, the Fantastic Four debuted in the 60s. A yep. little throwback to that. Imagine if it were the 60s for these characters, but it's going to be set in the modern day probably. But I think the clues are too specific in yeah. the poster, like the Life magazine. Otherwise, they just have him reading a magazine yeah, or, exactly. or look, looking on his phone or I mean, whatever. Yeah, and they know that people are going to look into this yeah, and absolutely. be like... I, th- I think that also it's the Fantastic Four. Mm, as, as, I didn't even realize as, that. Uh, as distinguished uh, from Fantastic Four or Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suspect if I were to take a, a shot at the plot of this potentially, mm. my guess is it's going to be because the Fantastic Four actually debuted in 61, I think. Okay. So my guess would be they have their origin briefly. We get a few little adventures. Or they're and, already established. Yeah, like yeah, Spider-Man absolutely. Or we, and then we get to 63. And there's some incident. They've already been like, I'm this one and I'm this one. They already did that? They already did which ones they were. <laughs> I'm this one. Yeah, that's Well, right. I'm this one. We'll fix these in post. <laughs> <laughs> and in turn, we'll do some research on what they're called, what their powers are, what their characterizations are like. We'll put it in ADR. Yeah. We'll get AI to do it. Um, we'll just, just get some audio from Evan Moss Backrack on the bear. We'll yeah. just have him. Cousin. Yeah, exactly. This is good. But I'm mad about it. It's not a cut. And I've got a gun. He does have a gun. So often that guy has a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Uh, and then as part of, you know, there, there's whichever villain, I think it, it might be Galactus. Is People have okay, suggested yeah. it might be Galactus. We're or... talking about a female herald of Galactus oh. and Javier Bardem rumoured for Galactus. You want a big face. You do that's want a very big face. Yeah. That's true. And then maybe... Ultimate nullifier? Yeah, maybe. But, uh, but then their ultimate sacrifice is they're like, okay, we've got to stop this guy. Mm. We have to head out into deep, deep space. And yep. then when they come back... Due to time dilation or relativity or, they or whatever, jump the dimension. Yeah, I'm. Th- I'm thinking it's going to be time dilation. I think so too. Uh, 
and then they come back and it's the present day. Because then they can have a scene with young Michael Douglas and he's like, hey, get out of here. Exactly. I'm an ant man. You're a rock man. Nice. That's not going to work. You know? We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. We'll both be the same type of man. <laughs> um, and then they're back and it's the present day and then Doctor Doom is the ruler of Latveria. Oh. I think that'll be, a, that'll, that'll be an addition. So you don't think that they knew him initially? I think they probably did know him because they went to uni. Oh, and he grew up. He grew up, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Ben, he's used their absence to become the ruler of Latveria. I know Ben Bendo threw his hat in the ring for uh, Dr. Doom. But you're already scroll, 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 scroll Tron. You, he is Skullbatron. You can't be it with him. You can be Skullbatron. No, I mean, he's wearing the mask, I guess. That's exactly but what I'm saying. keep him Australian. Mm. Get anyway, out. he's always wearing G'day, it. boys. Yeah. For you, is it? All right. <laughs> Don't know about that. Oh, yeah, that's not bad, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a Doctor Doom, like, t- tease. It won't yeah. be, like, a Doctor Doom movie, necessarily. Right. Yeah. Oh, the other person who appears. Oh, there's four, is there? It's only bloody six cans in this six-pack. <laughs> so what are you boys going to be having? <laughs> 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 zap. Yeah, no. Absolutely. Zap. Shitalizer, yeah. Uh, Herbie the Robot's there. Too, he's new. <laughs> yeah. Terrible beer. Oh, yeah, Herbie the Robot is also there, yeah. Yeah, which is interesting. Mm. So um, so he he was the robot that replaced Johnny Storm in the, the uh, Fantastic Four cartoon in the 60s. Was that? I know there's the rumour that's because kids were going to set themselves on fire, but is that actually true? It might also be a licensing issue. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, there was a few human torches, weren't there? Like... A, Different versions. From, oh, like, well, there was, there's, comic there's a version from the 40s. There's a, there's a hint at one in, I want to say, the first Captain America. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, it's um, when they when uh, Steve and Bucky go to the World's Fair, yeah. or whatever it is, whatever the, it the, is. Star, the Stark yeah, Expo, something. there is a there is a Human Torch-looking guy in a tube. So. But it's not the original Human Torch. It's, I mean, it's not the fire one. It's this one. It's the original one. It's not you know, Johnny Storm. No, it's exactly. Jim, it's Jim Hammond. It's yes. Jiminy Storm. Potentially. Mm. Uh, let's look up Herbie the Robot. Let's do let's do this. What does it stand for? Because it's H E R B I E, isn't it? Um, it's like a no. It's like an acro- acronym. Oh, an a- it's an anachronism. Oh, it's an anachronism. Oh, you want an acronym? No. The character was initially conceived for the new Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is nineteen seventy eight. Uh, okay, so 1978, the character of the Human Torch was unable to be used as at the time the character had been optioned separately for use in a solo film which never materialised. Oh, okay. What an odd call. Yeah, good as any. I like it. By 1978, they would have they would have absolutely perfected the art of putting that sticky stuff on people and then setting it on fire so they can run around oh my God. in warehouses and stuff. Jump so off or whatever. Yeah, he wouldn't be doing any flying. He'd just be doing a lot of jumping off of boxes <laughs> and stuff while on fire. What did I read recently? I think it was... Oh, no, that robber's going to get away. The only thing that could stop him is a guy on fire jumping off some boxes and crashing onto him. <laughs> He's done it. And we did it live. Oh, my God. Not in post. <laughs> You're fired. That's right. I remember this. Herbie turned up. Uh, did you read Old Man Quill? So you know they did Old Man Logan, they oh, did Old Man Peter Quill, and he comes back to Earth and he's an old man and he visits, like, the Fantastic Four place, right. and Herbie's still there. And so he has, like, there's a fun little interaction with, with Herbie, uh, yeah, which is, you know. A fun little throwback. That sounds fun. Anyway, will this be good? Anything can be good, but not anything, as we've learned twice this year. That's right. So far. On the Fantastic Four cartoon, Herbie was voiced by Frank Welker. Oh. Bring him back, I say. Megatron Zone. Bring him back. Among other things. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get get Hugo Weaving. Yeah, sure. (laughs) I am Herbie. Ah, ah, ah. Exactly. Um, Filming begins this summer. That's Northern Hemisphere summer. For those of us in the South, in the Mm -hmm. deep, deep South, which I know we are. Uh, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> check it That's out. Your pitch, is it? Check okay. it out, man. Great. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, any other thoughts on Fantastic Four? I think it's a good. I, I like it. A, I, I like the idea. Look, from what we've seen so yeah. far, I like it. Yeah. I mean, again, they've 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 mocked up Pedro Pascal with the the white at the temples. I yep. think it looks good. Yep. He has a beard sometimes in the comics. Sometimes he got a beard. Mm. Who's calling me? My mum. Well, let me get this. Yeah, all right. Sometimes somebody dies. Yeah. I know. Hello. That's my mum. Oh, thanks, mum. Oh, thanks, mum. Yeah. I, it's good to thank you, mum. Oh, I'm grateful, mum. I am. Grateful for the gift of life, mum. Oh, I'm not about that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is also directed by Matt Shackman, who more recently uh, worked on... What was the Marvel thing that he worked on recently? Oh, he did... He worked on Monarch. And he did WandaVision. WandaVision, that's right. So, yeah, good stuff going on here. We'll see see how we go. I agree. All I right. probably just went, just do, the, do it like the... Do it like the, old, the old retro stuff. Yeah. I went... Matt, just do it like the retro stuff in WandaVision. Anyway, all right. But by the end, if you can do lasers. Mm. It's like, I did that. Did you not watch WandaVision? They're like, no. <laughs> no, we just saw the promo. You don't watch it. Yeah. You just get them to fix it in post. Mm-hmm. 
It's rumour time. Uh-oh. This is why, it's a rumour time. This is by DCEU Leaks, and also Daniel Richmond confirmed this. A Midnight Suns project is in development at Marvel. So this came from DCEU Leaks. They're, they're leaking all things. Can't know. change a Twitter, hand, Twitter handle at this point. Mm. This is what it is. Michael Giancino is one of the directors currently eyed by Marvel to direct. He did Wolfman by Night. Michael Giacchino? Giacchino, yeah, what yeah. I say? I said the right thing too. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, also also the, he's also a composer. Right? Yes, he is a composer. He's worked on multiple composers. He did The Batman. He did do The Batman. That's a good movie. Is that great? They should drop the the. It's cleaner. do you think? <laughs> or put it in the middle. Put it in the middle. Bat the man. Bat the man. Bat the man, help. <laughs> oh, looks like he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> or he's ignoring us on purpose. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, what are the Midnight Suns team? It's the spooky team. It's a spooky team. It's spooky Avengers, basically. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, Usually Doctor Strange-led. Sometimes. Mm. He's in it. it. I mean... It, there was that game this year, maybe? It last was, yeah. Year, which was apparently good, but nobody bought it. But that was Midnight Suns S-U-N-S, whereas the comic version is Midnight Suns S-O-N-S. Oh, my but God. But then I guess they were like, well, if it's S-O-N-S, we can't have girls. So Great point. Yeah, yeah. So, but, I mean, the problem here, of course, is that in order to have a Midnight Suns piece of content. Yes. You've got to individually have some, you've got to have some Midnight Sun solo projects. So well, you, need, you need a Blade movie. Is that, well, which is maybe happening. Maybe. Uh, Ghost Rider. Do they bring back the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ghost Rider? Well, they could put in, uh, isn't the Punisher in it sometimes? So he could be. Uh, Wonder Vision, Wonder and Vision, or just Wonder, you could put, you put the spooky yeah, ones in there. Put the spooky ones in there. Sure, sure, Plus sure. the spooky. Well, Werewolf, obviously. That's true. Well, Why Werewolf, not? If Werewolf and Man thing, sure. Yep, there you go. Oh, uh, that's, okay. Well, ba- the team's basically Wolverine not Wolverine might be around at this point. No, Maybe. surely not. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well. I know there was also rumours of a Ghost Rider movie this week. I don't know whether that's going to happen, et cetera. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, why not? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, sure. It's not my job. My job to... This. Mm. Sometimes just Johnny Blaze and he doesn't have the Ghost Rider powers anymore. Oh, but he's got his motorbike. Sometimes. Cool. Yeah, sometimes he takes the bus. <laughs> a big fiery bus? Yeah. No, just a regular bus. Listen, I, I mean, sometimes buses just become yeah. fiery on their I'm own. Gonna, I'm going to be lighting this bus on fire <laughs> for my trip to the shops. That's right. Okay, Mr. Blaze. <laughs> All right. Trailers away, though. Punk. We got one, a new trailer for Godzilla X Kong. Well, we're That's getting right. Godzilla and Kong. Fighting again in this? We do. Is um, that okay? I, I don't think it's okay. They already had a fight. Yeah, I know. Mm. But people, you know, they get along. Yeah. And, you know, maybe Godzilla wrote his name on something on the fridge <laughs> and then he got, went, went to the fridge for it later and Kong had eaten it. Or it was gone. Yeah. And well, who else lives in the, in the apartment? And you know, know it's gone because he left his, his big glowing axe in there. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, sometimes you yeah. accidentally leave your keys in the fridge or whatever. Sure, you absolutely. You do that. Kong's going around. He's like, where's my big glowing axe? Yeah. I know you took it, Godzilla. Godzilla's like, why would I? Yeah. Why would I take the big axe? Well, I, 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 I don't use tools. I'm a lizard. It's just a copy of what I do, if anything. Well, it is. It's technically one of its plates, isn't it? I think so, yeah. yeah that's great. Mm, but I think, yeah, I think uh, Godzilla has gone mad. Because he's regenerating or whatever. Or he's got yeah. too much power. It looks like a too much puberty. power situation. Puberty. He's running around, he's got puberty. too much power. Yeah, okay, fine. He's running around, going through puberty, and he's <laughs> and he's got too much power. Because there's scenes where the, the Air Force are attacking him and he's he's blasting him with a big zap yeah. on his body. I think he's got too much power, and then he's going to go, he's fighting Godzilla. He's, uh, he's fighting Kong. Yep. And he's going to go, and he's going to uh, he's going to go into that hibernation state. He's going to regenerate his pink Godzilla, and then he's going to come out and he's going to fight Kong again. And then... Kong's going to be like, come on, man. What about this other big Let's monkey? Let's up this big gorilla together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to know the scale of the mini Kong. We haven't seen it next to anybody. No. How big is it? Because there's a moment in, I think, the previous trailer where it looks like it's going to be an enormous gorilla yeah. coming at him. And then, then the shadow, shadow shrinks down and he's yeah. a teeny little Godzilla. I think he's... I reckon he's like, if you, speaking of buses, you flipped a bus up. It's like bus That's the, Yeah, okay. What are you yeah, thinking? I think that's about right. Yeah. Sure. Mm, something to think about. Because he's got to be, even as a baby, he's got to be significantly bigger than a regular gorilla. Yeah. So. Do you like how Godzilla, like the, the bad guys, he's got a bigger whip? Uh, is that is that whip, that whip appears to be part of Godzilla's glove, isn't it? Part of Godzilla's glove? Or part King of Kong's, Kong's glove. I thought Kong was battling. Gun. He is, but I think that's initially part of his glove. Oh, uh, okay. And the, yeah. the other guy whips it off. Oh, him. I thought that was a weapon, because you know they have weapons? I yep. thought that was his weapon, and then Kong mm. needed a weapon. Oh, Whatever. Or whatever. Seems oh. like he must have he must have lost his axe. Do you think he's gonna get his axe smashed? And then he's like, I need a new weapon. I left it in the fridge. Golden style. I left it in the fridge. Yeah. 
<laughs> did leave it in the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's handy if it's late at night. Yep. You open the fridge door, maybe the light isn't working as well as it should. Big and glowing, put the big glowing action axe to, to see what snacks Godzilla's left in the fridge yum, so you yum, can yum. eat them. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I, I, I love that they live together. I do too. I'm loving there's, uh, there's uh, I think the director said something along the lines of they're a real bu- buddy cop duo in this movie. Sure. And I'm loving that. The more I see them running together, the more I'm loving it. Yeah. No, it's great. I'm, I was never not loving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And the more I'm loving that the Japanese Godzilla movies are like, this is about the failure of the government. And then, then the American ones are like, this is about dudes being bros. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what our movies are about. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mason, yes. you got a trailer? Uh, for Invincible Season 2, Part 2, another f- four episodes. Got some hints towards what's coming. That's right. Uh, the Sequids are back. They're oh, making yes. their way towards Earth. The Lizard League is there. Oh, yes. Armstrong Levy. Some of these words would sound like nonsense if you were not familiar with the show. Invincible. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, Armstrong Levy is the big villain, it appears, because uh, if you remember the last season and mm. this happened in the He's comics. interdimensional. Yeah, he interdimensions himself, mm. and he puts all the brains into one brain. He's got one big brain. Yeah, and he hates Mark. Um, Grayson across all dimensions and whatever. And yeah, then it's anyone named Mark across yeah. any dimensions. And there are hints towards what he does with these abilities and whatever. But I, if you haven't seen it, or, which you haven't yet because it's not out, but if you haven't read it, I won't. Because there's other stuff in here that I won't re- that I won't spoil. Like uh, Mark Grayson with a cape is a means a particular thing. Mark Capeson. Mark Capeson, which I won't get into. March 14th though. Uh-huh. So uh, yeah. if you're interested, Omni Man still in prison. Still in prison for being too cool. That's right. <laughs> too cool, man. Yeah, it's tough. That's a governor for you, though. It's tough to be a player. Yeah, it is. Like Omni Man. But don't hate the player. Hate the guy who used his son to kill a bunch of people in a train. Yeah, yeah. By holding his face up to the train and all the and all the people mushed into him. Yeah. As they say. We also got a trailer. Go on. After many hints for X-Men 97. That's right. I which thought, is a continuation of the 90s series. I thought this was going to get cancelled. Like, like that. that Spider-Man thing that is probably cancelled. That's still happening. Is it? But if they retooled it so it's not... A prequel series, it's set in the MCU, it's like independent of oh, okay, all of that, sure, I sure, believe. Sure. Okay. With some elements that carry over. Are they doing Principal Colson in that? Or yeah, that? Oh, oh, that was another thing they already did or okay, something. Right. But yes, something like it's. If it's not that, it's something like that. Sure, and I don't great. remember what. All right. All right. I'll think about it when I need to. Okay, Marvel will fix it in post. Um, X-Men so, 97. So did, did X-Men, did the original X-Men cartoon series end with Professor X dying? I guess so. <laughs> okay. I, when, I didn't get all the way through it, did you? I, I mean, I guess... Because it, it came on once a week. I reckon sometimes. in Australia they probably showed him in a random order. Yeah. It was that time when nobody cared about continuity. I think it was also they did that everywhere else as yeah, well. Yeah, sure. And there uh-huh. might have been some DVD issues with what to watch. I bet of the X-Men cartoon series from that era, I've seen a bunch of episodes five times and some of them never. We did some. Do we do Days of Future Past once or talk about it? Potentially. They do, they, a lot of the comic book storylines, like they did like the Dark Phoenix saga, et cetera, uh-huh. they, do, they do like Cable and Bishop and yeah. a bunch of stuff like that, time travel nonsense. Um, Cable and Bishop live together in an apartment, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was a very good show. I clearly put my name on that techno-organic virus. <laughs> New essence. New essence. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember enjoying it a lot as a kid. I, I can't say I've watched it. Yeah, much of it since. I don't think it, is, it endured the same way for me as like Batman, Batman the animated series. But speaker. also Batman the animated series, like it never really stopped. It has always continued its That's different true, yeah. incarnations. Uh-huh, yeah. Whereas the X Men kind of pivoted into just oh. what they were doing in the movies. Yeah. And every now and then they do the, you know, like more recently, like here's the X Men yeah. thing. You like this? Yeah. You dumb fucks. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you like this? You like these jangling keys? We do. I do Here at the Weekly Planet, we do. We love yeah. them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> ling, 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 ling. Oh, yes, please. A lot ding, of... Ding, ling, 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 ling. Ding, ling, 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 ling. ling. Now, uh, a lot of cast is returning. Um, some new. The animation style is different because this is cell-shaded... 3D. Computer animation made to look 2D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's a, once you get the character models, it's, ch- it's cheaper. Oh, sure. Because you can infinitely use them yes you don't have to draw every frame every time yeah and obviously there is something lost in that um but there is a there's an expedient something to be gained yeah it's fast it's faster <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, and get... then you plug it into that ai that ai thing yep and then you can have the x-men walking down all kinds of streets oh my god so many drone shot yeah. yeah exactly uh magneto is oh, magneto magneto's here somewhere down this nondescript street <laughs> he's there we can't go up there yeah that's just a background <laughs> Oh, he's there. He's on the same plane of... <laughs> he's in our line of sight, which is good. Well, Magneto is... Prevent- he's in our line of sight. That's perfect. So I can look at the camera dramatically at him and he can look back. 
This is perfect. This is perfect for us. God, this is expedient. <laughs> expedient. Wow. Mm. Um, Professor X is dead and Magneto is Professor X now. He's like, I was left everything. Mm, he's inherited Do you think that's that stuff. true? Or do you think he's doing a big trick? I think this is creative accounting. Yeah. Do you think he forged Professor X's signature? Maybe. And, and nobody's thought to check. Mm. Maybe he found a mutant whose mutant ability is perfectly forged signatures. That's probably possible too. Mm -hmm, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because they could also just go, no, we won't. We don't allow this. What if we blasted a hole through your body? Yeah. Magneto. You're not wearing your helmet. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Did he have that luxurious long hair in the comic? Not uh, that I remember. Cartoon? Yeah. Well, it's been some time. There's been a few times where he's like infiltrated the X Men or led various X Men teams. Yeah, he's been, he's been, he's worked in the, in yeah. the school. So, yeah. He's an anti hero of sorts, depending on. Sure. Depending on your opinion of him. killing Nazis. Yeah. Is <laughs> bad or not? <laughs> It's killing Nazis and sometimes he goes too far, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment where you see uh, Gambit. He supercharges Wolverine's claws. Does that mean his claws are going to explode on I hope back? so. Yeah. I hope so. That'd be cool. Is this version of Wolverine... He's like, ah, Gambit, you dog. Is this Why would you do this? Does this version of Wolverine have the bone claws under that? I don't know. No way of knowing. God. And they look very thin from memory. They do, so yes. I don't know uh, yes. what they're doing here. There's also, look... I don't... never liked that bone claw situation. No, me neither. I liked it. I, uh, was it, or was that the, the the Wolverine prequel comic that brought that idea in? No, it was brought in. Well before that? No, before that. So it was brought in in a storyline where Magneto ripped Took all the, the adamant. He ripped right. all the adamantium off Wolverine's body. Yeah. And then everyone was like, what's Wolverine going to do with our claws? But then it turned out he already had claws. Yeah, yeah. No. People were like, whoa. He, you, I remember th you told me this. There's like a... X-ray X-Men thing from like the 90s where you, it's a mechanical. I feel very confident the there's, a, there's are built in his yeah. solo series in the 90s. There's a there's a there's a scene where he has to go through airport security and he and to show everybody that why mm. he keeps setting off the metal detector. He puts his hand in the in the X-ray machine and you can see it's got like yep. mechanical stuff in there. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, just come to oh is Ollie here? Is Ollie here? <sighs> Hello. Hello, Ollie. Hello. Where'd you go? Talk time, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, out you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye, Ollie. Bye. That was fun. Didn't seem fun for you. Fun. Okay, great. That's good. That's fun. Have you considered patting the dog? I pat my dog as many times as I want, which is none. <laughs> oh, brutal. Uh, there's also the thing of like, oh, they... You would be a cat person. I'm not a cat person, Mason. Mm. I'm not against cats. Sure. I just don't need another thing in my life. In Not even the thing? No. Eben Moss Backrack? I mean, I like him. He's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Also, he's been a Marvel guy as well. Yeah, he's micro. Yeah. Well, the thing, you said something earlier about a guy couldn't be another guy. Yeah, but there's a difference between being a minor Netflix guy and a, and a show, which may or may not be, but probably is canon. And being now. a supporting character in a movie several years ago and then a supporting character in a show where you killed that nobody saw except for the last episode, which everyone hated because it was stupid that he wasn't in. People saw Captain Marvel, the movie. I know. And he's going to be wearing a mask, I guess, if he's Dr. Doom. That's what it. I'm saying. Yeah, look, whatever, man. I don't care. Let him do it. I don't care. Mads Mikkelsen wants to do it or is rumoured as well. I'm going to drink this too with you. Fine with me. Do you hand me a straw? <laughs> a straw? He needs a straw. He would need a straw. <laughs> Paper straw. Uh... Um, there's a character that's like non-binary because it oh, can be more. anybody sure. and people are like, oh, here we go. And it's like, yep, it's the fucking X-Men idiot. You do you not understand <laughs> the X-Men. I don't think they should have any minorities on this <laughs> X-Men show. It's also like, it's... They're just guys who shoot lasers yeah, and whatever. Yeah, I mean, it is, but it's also reflective of like, yeah, the character can be anybody. So obviously it would be, no, that's, the, that's yeah. how it would work. Uh -huh, sure. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, March 20, it's out. Some of them. Great. Great. Deadline, they said. Deadline. Now, Netflix, you know this. This is our new segment. Deadline. Deadline. They spent $30 million on a he on live action He Man movie. I should I should let you know that the rules for this segment are mm -hmm. at some point I'm going to yell, Deadline, and you have to stop. Okay. So even if even if we aren't, we aren't finished with a bit of news, yep. you have to stop when we move on. I'm happy with that. Okay. That's fine. And go. Netflix, uh, <laughs> spent, they spent $30 million on the He Man movie. Developing it. Remember the movie because they have the rights for like TV stuff, or they did. Oh, live action. Yes. Huh. But now it's uh, they gave up on that and it's gone over to Amazon. We've like, just given up. Yeah, pretty much. We've had it. We're not doing We're it. In the middle of filming, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> it went over to Amazon slash MGM Studios, and now Travis Knight 
director of Bumblebee and Kubo and the Two Strings is on board to direct this oh. He-Man movie that they're never going to make. Yeah. Now, this, this, if they've got a director mm-hmm. and it's at a new studio, this is a this seems like a fair shot. At this. Absolutely. this could actually happen this time. Now, what do you want from a live action version? Do you want who who can we who can we cast as live action He Man? I think they had someone in mind. I can't. Okay. I mean, the Jack Reacher guy, obviously. Oh, Alan Richardson, sure. Yeah. But he wants to be Batman. Well, you can't. We're going to wait until that falls apart before. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't think he'll be Batman. No, I think he'll just do Reacher for like. Yeah. He'll just get more and more money for Reacher. For, yeah. for years. I mean, there's like a hundred of those books. I think he'd be a good Batman. Yeah. But um. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. They must oh, have... but, all, but he was a guy in a show, James. He was Can't a guy. Can't be a guy in a show. Well, George I Clooney was a guy in a show. He was ER, then he was Batman. That's so true, isn't and it? And then he was Batman again recently. It's so true. If I recall correctly. And he's going to be ER again. He's going to be Mr. ER. Doctor. That was his character's name. Doctor. Doctor. Uh, he always had ERs on the side of caution, am I right? Nice. That's good. Uh, what were we going to say there? Um, deadline. That's what you were going to say. Um, I was going to wait till we are finished and I was going to okay. say deadline. That was going to be the bit. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> we can still do it. I'll do it later. Hey, what do you want from He-Man? Uh, All the Dark World, right? Weird pretty magic. much. Yeah, with magic and technology, yes. Yeah. Give, like, and, you know, there is a certain appeal to the Dolph Lundgren version, that, that whole yeah, weird, is. terrible one we saw. But just go all that. Like, if you've got the rights, give us Battle Cat and all weird the vehicles. Weird vehicles. I'm going to talk about the new series on oh, yes. Netflix a bit later and what we're reading. But, yeah, something akin to that. Don't be ashamed of the thing that it is. Mm. It is this weird thing that's just designed to sell toys. But there's some, whenever I watch that show and they'll be like, they'd bring in, like, a leech. I'm like, I have fucking leech in areas. <laughs> areas? That's Stinkor. I didn't see Stinkor this time around. Okay, right. But, uh, yeah, good questions all around, um, if that was a question. Any faces. Oh, many faces. Yeah. Buzz off. Skelglow. Sk- what's his name? Skullglow? You know that guy? No. Like Skeletor, but he's, he's not Skeletor. Whoa. He's a glowing skeleton. <laughs> that would be awkward, I think. Yeah. Is that is. What, what is he? One of Skeletor's minions? Something like that. He turns up in the first season and they're like, shit, it's Skeletor. Oh, no, it's knockoff Skeletor. Ah. Oh. Yeah. It's like meeting the GoBots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, oh, no, it's the GoBots. <laughs> This is not the Rock Lords, I guess. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> what was the name of the guy? And he looked like He Man, but he was a robot. Robot Baker. He Man. Yeah, he's nice. in it as well. Oh, nice. First season, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. The cool. Blue He Man. Yeah, Blue He Man. Lee Man. Mm. Deadline. There we go. <laughs> Last bit of news. Oh yes. Spy variety. Mm-hmm. Which is the spice of life, as we know. It's so true. Amy Pascal, who you might... If that's not their slogan, it should be. <laughs> it should be content as the spice of life. And Media is the sli- a slice of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amy Pascal, you might know as a uh, Spider-Man producer. She used to be at Sony, I think she left, and now she just sort of owns Spider-Man. I don't know. Good for her. Yeah. A live-action Miles Morales won't be seen on screen, she said, until we make two more movies. So, so people were thinking the next two Tom Holland movies. Yes. But the Spider-Verse producer and writer Chris Miller clarified on Twitter when she said not until we make two more movies, she meant Beyond the Spider-Verse, which is the next animated Spider-Man movie, mm-hmm. and the next live-action Tom Holland film. Oh. So it seems as if they're going to go movie two. In yeah. the Tom Holland Spider-Man universe. Miles Morales, and then you do a third one where they team up for the yep. whole movie. That's cool. The okay. whole movie. Movie. Or well, you kill original Peter Parker. You kill him because you're sick it of it. It has happened. We're sick to death of that guy. It has happened. That was the original Ultimate Universe. They killed original Peter know, Parker. That's right, yeah. That's how it went. Do you think if Tom Holland doesn't want to do Spider-Mans anymore, do you think they'll recast that Spider-Man? No, I think, think they'll just... Kill? There's so many... Well, I was going to say there's so many Spider-Men slash women options that you yeah. could use, but they've burned through a few recently, haven't they? <laughs> they sure have. <laughs> they've rendered them unusable. You could also bring back one of the previous ones, you know. It's... Or you could just use them again because, I mean... Who cares? That's what I'm saying. Ben Mendo. Anyway. <laughs> sure. G'day there, boys. I'm the spider <laughs> uh, Deadline. We'll go to the next segment. Okay, great. Talk about Madden Web. Work comes in many forms. Some things work out, but you have to put in the work. For over 20 years, Commonwealth Charter Academy has put in the work to perfect virtual learning and in-person experiences for K-12 to learners. Plus, CCA provides all the resources, materials, and support each student needs to thrive cost-free. To us, it's all in a day's work. CCA, how schools should work. Visit ccaeducate.me. Hello, listener. Is it me you're looking for? As brands, we're always wanting to make a connection, to find the person you can rely on, the one that's there every week, month, or year, and always has your back when you need them the most. It's a little like matchmaking, don't you think? 
With ACAST Podcast Ads, you can filter for your exact dream audience so you can find the ideal customer for your business. The Romeo to your Juliet, the Rachel to your Ross, the Bert to your Ernie, and avoid those red flags and time wasters. Your ads can communicate with them in the most intimate way possible. A one-on-one conversation, a chance meeting in the gym, or a coffee shop. So go on, give it a try. With over hundreds of thousands of listens a month, your person is probably here. Get closer to your audience. Make podcast ads with Acast. Head to go.acast.com to get started. From the minds who brought us Morbius, gods of Egypt, and Dracula Untold, comes Women Morbius. Oh, yes. I think that's kind of unfair. People have been saying the writers of this, they made they some wrote Drake. those other movies. They've made some Drake. But, like, as we'll talk about, a lot of things get changed along the way. You can write something amazing and that's then right. Sony do it. And then you, you can be anything. Yeah. It can, can become whatever. Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless, yep. great names. Yep. Uh, they wrote, among other things, Dracula Untold, The Last Witch Hunter, Morbius, Gods of Egypt. All of which have very low Rotten Tomatoes scores, but yeah, but the but the I, Craig Marson didn't he do like superhero movie, which was like a parody? Yeah, he did the scary movie movies, and That's then right. he made Chernobyl. Yeah, so like it's really about getting your vision accurately portrayed. Well, yeah, and, and having and, the team behind. And they it. say in Hollywood, like if you know you don't make it long if you don't know how to play ball or if you're not talented in some way. Yeah, and I think. What, see, what, ha- what has happened with a lot of those movies, I think they've also written some good movies. But uh, what happens, I think, generally is they write a good script, writers can write a good script, and then it just gets noted to death. Yeah. And and they, you know... Or in, killed in the edit. Killed in the edit. Or, or somebody has to... They're like, we need a scene where somebody says the game is on. Yeah. Or we need the guy to build a big fist out of bats or whatever. I think that would have been in the original script because <laughs> that's a genuinely good idea, mm. in my opinion. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. But now they've turned their... Dirty hands to Madam Web. Wow. Let's get into this because on a budget of $80 million, they're doing these lower budget Sony movies, the Sony Pictures Universal Marvel movie Spum. That's right. They did a similar thing with Morbius because that way you don't need to make that much money to True. turn a huge profit on these. Make a hit. But the problem is... This is, a hit, this, is the, this is the equation for being a hit machine. It basically is, but you have to actually make a product that people like and don't think is laughable but not laughable in a way where they have to see it they're laughable in the sense that i'm just going to see all the clips on twitter and yeah, laugh yeah. at them through that that's right yeah uh so that's looking it's looking at around or it was initially a 20 to 25 million u.s opening weekend over like six days because it opened on valentine's day but it might not even make 20 million at this point no it, it's it's dipping yeah. we'll see uh-huh. monday the numbers will be confirmed but uh yeah it's it's not looking good and the bob marley Biopic is apparently doing much better, so that's kind of killing it. <laughs> sure. and, you know, mm-hmm. this is where we're at. What do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. All right. Of so, Madam Web. So movie. Madam Web <laughs> is Cassie Web. Yeah. And no one likes her and she doesn't like anyone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then. <laughs> uh, then. She has a big, big accident. She has a big accident. She drowns, and then when she comes back, she can sort of see the future a bit in a vague way. It's not really yep. uh, consistent. Yeah. And then uh, then it turns out there's a bloke out there, and he wants to kill three women. And he's Spider-Man. He's evil Spider-Man. Sort of. He's evil Spider-Man, sort of. Yeah. Uh, and then she's got a... It's really sp- missing something about the webs, isn't it? It really takes an element away of... There's <laughs> some webs in this movie. Spy- not on here. What's he doing? No, he's that's got true. web and nobody. Yeah. Mm. Should be called Madam Web and Mr. Jump. <laughs> you know? And it could have been a rom com. And she could have been a rom-com. And stick. Yep. Okay, so Madam Web and Mr. Jump and stick. <laughs> I think that's too many words. You're right. Just yeah. Mr. Jump is fine. Yeah. Anyway, so go on. That's it. And then she's got to save him, even though she doesn't he's, want to. He's out to kill three women. Three whip girls. Three girls. Because they're in the future, in 10 years or whatever, mm-hmm. are going to come to his house. Dressed as Spider Man. Yeah, and beat him up. Assorted Spider Man. They're going to they're basically do the start of Watchmen to it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's right. Or the end of most movies <laughs> that are fun where some a bunch of people surround a guy and beat him up. I find it hard to believe. The end of the movie Death Proof. Yeah, but like the three Spider Women would team up. Go to this guy's house who haven't moved just kill and him. throw him off a building. Yeah, all right. It doesn't really feel like no. in character with either the, these characters in the comics. I mean, there's been so many versions. Yeah. And also the, the actors and the portrayals here. Sure. Uh-huh. Just a very bizarre. I mean, he must have really done something to upset yeah, them. Yeah, right. Because it obviously doesn't come to pass. Mm. Um, so it's just kind of 
It's a, like, how did we get here? Like, he must have tormented them for years and then not moved. Like, yeah. just stayed in his house. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, fucking dreadful. What What is happening here? I mean, in a way that's like, it, there's, a, there's a lot of fascinating yeah. elements to this. It's not good. <laughs> I was entertained for the most part, but a lot of it is baffling. Yeah. I think it's more, in, it's worse than Morbius, but... It's more interesting. I think it's Morbius be- is boring. I think it is more interesting and therefore better than Morbius. But what I'll also say is this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that Madam Web is 2024's Joker. Unless Joker 2 is also coming out this year, in which case it is 2024's first Joker. Okay. In the sense that it is a very light sprinkling of superhero references sure. over what is just a genre film. Yeah. In this case, it is kind of like lightweight supernatural horror slasher film very lightweight yeah um i'm not dancing around any spoilers for this okay sure. you've either seen it or you haven't it's okay. all been spoiled online yeah that's right okay because if you're looking for superhero elements to this mm-hmm. madam webb wears a 70s leather coat what year is this set we'll talk about it uh-huh. and the three spider women who are destined to become spider women that's only done in flash forward mm. and you never they don't do anything spider related or get their powers by the end. Yeah. Even at the end when they're all living together, they're sure. still not yep. spider people yet. No, that's true, yeah. It's kind of wild. So so this is so this is sort of when I say like a like a supernatural horror slasher, I mean sort of in the style of Final Destination, except there's no fate the the idea the idea behind the marketing for this movie is that fate, there's a web and it connects them all. Yep. And there's fate. And so Fate, in a way, or magic or destiny, connects Madam Web with Sims, who's the bad guy. But the other three are just around. Yes. So in a Final Destination movie, generally speaking, it's a group of people, friends or strangers, and they, they avoid death. You know, a, a sudden in a plane crash or something like that, they miraculously survive, and then fate sort of catches up with them individually. Mm-hmm. And so that is sort of Madam Web's deal, is that she survives. Uh, she survives this... Uh, drowning and her powers were unlocked. She's a she's a paramedic because uh, and she got her powers because her mum was bitten by a spider as she died yep. in the Peruvian jungle. And Sims got his powers because he stole a spider out of the jungle and he was cursed. And that's why the girls forever, just sort of live in the same area. Yeah, that's their deal. There's no there's no revelation that they were all in the one place at the one time and some magic thing happened. No, it's just one of them lives in Madame Web's building. One of them nearly one, ran into her on ambulance. An ambulance, and one of them. Oh, the uh, stepmom got in a car accident. That's right. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and so she was at the hospital. At so one she point. sort of met some of them. Yeah. At one point. But at some point, those three are going to get spider powers. How? We don't know. It's not important. <laughs> it's very it's much. Not, not a story important. worth telling. It's, apparently, it's not. No, <laughs> that's right. And all different spider powers. Yeah, too. exactly. Because you also could have. This could have just been a spider women team up movie, like an actual one. job. Yeah. Okay. But they went with this. But it also could have been just this, like. Or just do one. You can make ver- one Spider Woman. One, one has powers. Yeah. But I mean, you could also, again, you could also like strip out all the spider stuff. If I, if I were to take this from the 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 setting of it's just a horror movie about this unstoppable weird guy that, yeah, you know, they did something in the past. It's you know, it's it's Final Destination. It's I know what you did last summer. Yep. It's any number of other, these other things where you get some young teen stars and you put them in the movie mm-hmm. and. In the, their characters at the start, they had some experience and they're like, oh, girl, glad we got out of this. But then it's, you know, br- brought about the creation of this murderous monstrosity that follows them around. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, this is a bit of lightweight fun. Yeah. And in addition to that, I will add, the idea of a Spider-Man, but he's a killer. Yeah. There is something in that. Well, I mean, we've talked in the past about how it would be nice to do... Brightburn, like, for example. Yes. Yeah, take a concept. And yeah, you... superhero movies, but put, put it in it. Give us a horror version. Give us a... You know, an give espionage. Us a rude one. Give us a rude, a sexy, rude one, but but also has to be good. Yeah, we should have said that every Caveat. every every <laughs> single time we we said this in the in the past ten years of doing this podcast, we've said it a bunch of times. We should have added that caveat. <laughs> it also has to be good, and I and I in in a way, this is our fault because I yeah. feel like we should we didn't say that. You're right. We assumed. I kept saying anything can be good. Yeah, but I should have true. said, but you actually have to like. Expensive some, effort. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we didn't do that, did we? So this is, in a way, this is our fault that we apologise. Uh, but I, th- you know, and again, if you did, there is a 
you could pick any number of super villains in the Marvel universe and go, what about a movie where Craven the Hunter? Yeah, or or oh no, oh, no. <laughs> like you could do a movie where some kids piss off Electro when he's robbing a bank or something, yeah, and then he follows the through the city trying to kill him or whatever. That? You know that that could work, and this could have worked, but it doesn't work for for a bunch of reasons. Here's some things I like. I like how unpleasant Cassie Webb is. Oh my god! She doesn't like her job. So aloof. She, doesn't, she doesn't like her coworkers. She doesn't like a kid mom. comes up and who saved uh, her, her. She saved this woman's kid. No, she saved a woman and a she kid. shaved a woman. She shaved a woman, and the kid comes up and he goes, "Thank you for shaving my mum," and gives her a picture, and she's like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" And her partner's like, "You just take it, and then you, later you throw it away." Like, yeah. have you never Has spoken this never to happened? anybody yeah, ever in right. your life? What are you talking about? Like, did you not? I mean, I understand your mum was researching spiders in the Amazon before she died. Well, so they didn't never, actually mention that no, they line. They didn't mention it. We see it, but it's not yeah. in the movie. Some things, the that are, there's some things that are in the trailer but not in the movie, that that line. Yep. Also, the spider women really doing anything. Yeah. Everything you see in the trailer is pretty much here yep. for the spider women doing anything. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm loving her energy. She hates teenagers. Yep. She hates doing stuff. She hates sitting at home alone, but she hates going out. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, I think – what they may have been going for, or this might be an accident, is that the character of Madame Webb is quite removed and aloof and kind of above yeah. everything that is happening. Uh -huh. But at the start, like you said, she's a paramedic. She's like a public servant yeah. mm -hmm. uh, whose job it is to save people, which she does, but she doesn't understand any other element of just being a person. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they put it down to, like, her mum disappeared and whatever. But, oh, God. So at the start when it says, like, association with Marvel or whatever. And you then, know what they should have done? They should have bought Marvel Knights from, the, like, the, the, the banner Marvel Knights from yep. Marvel because that would work better. Anytime I see in association yeah. with Marvel, I'm like, you're not fooling anyone. No, that, and they must know that at this point. And the first thing it says is, like, on the screen is the Peruvian jungle, 1973. And I, 1973. And I literally, Duncans. I went out, out loud. I went, all right. Like that was <laughs> that was how this began. How dare you talk out loud in a theatre and interrupt nobody? <laughs> there were some people there. That's interesting. And anyway, her mother's hunting for a CGI spider for reasons we don't know, mm. and she's four hundred months pregnant. Sure. She's about to give birth to Cassie Webb. Yeah, sure. And but the reason we later we find out is that Cassie Webb has some kind of disease, which is probably a fake Marvel universe disease. Maybe it's real. I don't sure. know. And she wants to get. She's got ultimate nulliferitis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's got Thor's hammerus. Mm. But um, and basically, she needs the spider venom to it'll heal her daughter. Yeah. And she's got extensive notes about the jungle and research and who she's working with and different spider enzymes and types or whatever. But she and her daughter has all of that. But she never wrote. I'm doing this because my daughter has an incurable disease. Yes. And that's why I'm in the jungle when I'm nine months pregnant. Right. So she grows up her whole life just thinking that her mother was just running around with spiders in the jungle. And also, like, there's, there's, there's a scene, we see in flashback her mother going to the doctor. Mm. You, don't, you, don't, you don't think that maybe Cassie Webb would go to the doctor yeah. after her mother died and go, what did my mother die of? Oh, okay, and I had an incurable disease, but I don't have one. That's, That's interesting. That's weird. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she kind of gets an incurable disease by the end of the movie. But also, here's the thing. When she becomes Madam Webb. The, the Ezekiel Sims is cursed to be evil Spider-Man yeah. because he uh, he shoots Mama Webb and he leaves the forest with the spider, the, the special spider with the special Which source. Which he thinks is cool. Yeah, cool, right? and he is cursed to become evil Spider-Man. So what if Cassie Webb's mum mm. left with the spider? Would she also get cursed? And then, wow. then Madam Webb would be cursed. I guess right? so, with yeah. Probably worse than what she had. Yeah. God, it opens with her just so much explaining explaining, like, I'm here because this is a particular thing and I need this enzyme and whatever. And then he goes back to camp and he's like, I'm going to rifle through our notes. And then she just runs up with the jar and goes, hey, I found that fucking spider. was in this you, jar. You know what we were just talking about? It was a jar yeah, on the I ground. Yeah, I found it. I, picked, I don't know. There's, uh, there's, even, there's no holes in the top. We'll put holes in the top. <laughs> yeah. We'll put holes in the yeah, top. Whose jar is this, by the way? <laughs> I transferred to my own jar, but I didn't bring in his jars. I, like I didn't think this was going to happen, to And be honest. Ezekiel Sims is just like, I'm going to shoot everyone now that that spider's turned up. You could just go with her, like, and get mm. out of the jungle. And, yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's a... Anyway, she also, the vague powers, there's a moment also where she flashes back and visits her mother, mm -hmm. and they hug. Yeah. What is, what's happening? 
What are the what are the what are the powers here? Because she's got the Nicolas Cage next powers where she can next see the knowing. The future, sure, the she's future. got the next knowing. I know. Here's something I like. I think it's interesting how they filmed a lot of these scenes multiple times in slightly different ways. I think that is technically a difficult thing to do, and they pulled off most of them. <laughs> Unless you just get them to do three takes and you don't throw any away. But you got to do it separately. Oh, yeah, well, you could do that too. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. But like, she's got the next and knowing powers. She yep. can maybe send her astral form back in time or something. Sometimes she can split herself into three. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna to make the ultimate. Oh, you're gonna make the ultimate Spider-Man choice. Every Spider-Man has to do this. I'm sorry. Uh, what, th- these three Spider Women, they're all gonna die. Which one are you gonna save? Oh, all at once. Okay, great. Great, that's really good. Oh, okay. All right, I want to talk about this. Go on. So she loves Mountain Dew, Does she? and that speaks to with at the start. She goes to the, they get a Mountain Dew. There's a oh. big Pepsi sponsorship through this. It sure is. The villain does get killed by a giant Pepsi sign. That's not a joke. Um, okay, so no, I'll get into this first. So. The spider women in this, that they're supposed to be like teenagers. Yes. She's, you know, protecting. But the actors are 22, 25, and 26. And I feel like it does just look like there's three grown women just, just all hanging out together. Sure, absolutely. And they, the police think that – it's set in 2003. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. And the police think that she might have kidnapped these women. But you could just go – like, but there's no, they don't know who Cassie Webb is specifically mm-hmm. or seem to know who these girls are specifically. There's just a vague idea and maybe like a, a grainy security footage of sure. her just with these three women and not holding them at gunpoint, being like, get in the van. Yeah, yeah. she's like, they, follow they're me. They're just running together. Yeah, sure. So she's sort of on the... I mean, that was New York in 2003, man. Running together was a crime. <laughs> Well, the more Giuliani cleaned yeah, it up. Yeah, well, the stop and frisk, you know, and all of that situation. But with – so with that element of there being these three women that they're hanging out with, I don't think any of them are particularly, like, given much to do, for no. one, superheroing. But, like, Sydney Sweeney's in this, right? And if you see her in anything, whether it be, like, Euphoria or that recent rom-com, apparently, which I didn't see, or uh, – So if you see it or anything, including the stuff you didn't yeah, see. Yeah, I didn't see. Uh, she's in the first season of White Lotus. Yep. She's actually, like – quite funny and manic and like she does some great delivery mm-hmm. and in this th- nothing just f- they're all flat and like whatever and it's like if you've got sydney sweeney sure you don't want to like do any of the things that she's capable of like doing no <laughs> also ezekiel sims is dubbed for most of this it seems i think a lot of people are dubbed. yeah this, yeah and a lot of it's like 80 art off camera it's like, yeah, you have to help me because I need this spider because of the sp- if I get the spider. There's a moment where it's, I think I think it's Sydney Sweeney character was like... sounding exhausted. Did you, look, did you he's, like a, he's like a spider person. Yep. Very good. Very. Oh, ben Parker's in this. And and Peter Parker's mum. And Peter Parker. And Peter Parker as a baby. Is that Emma Roberts as... Yes, it as, is. As yeah. uh, Mary Parker. Yeah, yeah so... so yeah, that's how we're tying it all together. We've got Adam Scott as uh, as, as Ben Parker. He's in this. Yep. Oh, I like. Yep. He also cool. played Ben in Parks and Rec, so this is confusing to oh, me. Oh, Ben Parks and Rec. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Whoa. Yeah, he's fun. I think them, also Dakota Johnson and him as a pairing is... Because they're, right? they're paramedic. They're, they're okay a paramedic together. duo together. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And it's yeah. 2003. Now, did, did Dakota Johnson spoke to the rap about like how this came up to be, and she said after she came on board, there were drastic changes. And she said, I can't even tell you what they were. Oh. So we had the theory, we talked about this in previous weeks and so have others, that everybody in this signed on board thinking it was an MCU movie. Mm-hmm. And that's how they trick people into these. It happened to Matt Smith with Morbius. That's right. It seems to have happened here uh, with everybody involved. They should do a PSA about this. <laughs> yeah, they should. That's right. <laughs> or a, uh, uh, some sort of, um, some sort of uh, lawsuit advertisement. Have you or any member of your family ever been tricked into being in a spum? <laughs> you might be liable for compensation. But also, the, that's so, right. You're liable for li- compensation. <laughs> We're going to sue you as well. <laughs> that's right. I didn't misspeak. So it's 2003, right? Mm-hmm. But I think they've obviously changed this, and they've been very kind of cagey about whether or not that's the case. Uh-huh. There's a few hints towards this, like just being all over the place. One being, there's a moment where a guy on a train is playing a PSP. And in North America, oh, yes. that came out in 2005. The, the Japan version came out in 2004. Whoa. Um, there's a moment where... De- uh, maybe his uncle works at Nintendo. Maybe he does work at Nintendo and he knows somebody at Sony. There's a moment where Dakota Johnson just says, I just want to go home and watch Idol. Idol. Mm. Uh, maybe she meant The Idol, the TV <laughs> series with The weekend in it. It could have been. Mm. It may as well be set now because of some of the technology. 
There's a moment where one of the three... Wait, when did Idol come out? Uh, early 2000s, Idol. around well, this fine, time. That's totally That's fine. what I'm saying. I think it's just put in. Yeah. But it's also confused. That's what a... all movies are, James. Stuff that's put in. There's a moment where one of the teenagers pulls out a phone and they go, whoa, a phone. And it's like, hey, it's fucking 2003. Yeah, sure. There's fo- people, teenagers have phones. In 2000, that wasn't unusual, was it? I don't think for so. For somebody to have a phone. Mm. And also, there's a. do you remember the moment where she gets a can of Pepsi? She comes Boy, to the barbecue. Boy, do I, yeah. If you look at that Pepsi, I think they changed the can to like either a 2003 version or a different product placement or something. Because she's holding a fake can, right? But like that, she's holding it a lot. I mean, maybe they got you were so you were so animated you knocked your microphone <laughs> I over. Did. I think maybe they got the Pepsi sponsorship towards the end of the production, and okay. maybe it was just a generic can or something, and they added it. But then, how would Ezekiel Sims be killed by the P in the Pepsi sign? Well, exactly. There must have been some Pepsi development yeah. early on. Maybe they're just like, okay, we're going to drop some star, we're going to drop some blue screen styrofoam on you, and you're going to be killed by something. Mm. So we'll figure out what it is later. Oh, so you don't want to be killed by the S? For, like, spider woman or man? No, you've been killed for P for Peter. <laughs> I guess so. Mm-hmm. P for Peter Pepsi. That's right. Um, and there's, a, there's technology in this where Ezekiel Sims, he's been driven mad because ever since he stole the spider from the jungle, from the Peruvian jungle. He's been having these dreams every night of yeah. these three random women dressed in spider costumes killing him, and which how- I think is a sex thing, quite frankly. <laughs> how can he identify them, though? How can he do it? Because he's like, how can I do it yeah. with the technology of this year of 2003? And it turns out he can somehow just tell a computer, which will put an exact likeness of what they look like in their spider woman costume. Ah, uh, special NSA technology, James. You're right. And then you say, just de age it 10 years uh. without the masks, and this is exactly what these three girls look like. You don't now know what technology was like in 2003. <laughs> I do because I was there, Mason. Mm, I don't know. And we all had phones. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. And I also think if you look at the soundtrack, it, it speaks to, like, the confusion about what was going on because – there's the song Miles Away by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, which is 2003. This is some of them. There was Scandalous from Mystique, which is 2018. There's what? Meredith Brooks. 2018? That's a 15-year discrepancy. Yeah. It's the, it's the Stargate radio mix, apparently. Uh, there's the song Bitch by Meredith Brooks, and that's from 1997. Well, that's fine, James. Yeah. There's a song Toxic by Britney Spears, which is 2003, but it came out in an album, I think, the previous year. Because remember, they're like, this song's got to be big. It's a big song. We're all going to dance together on the t- There's boys here, and we're dancing. Um, I think we're alone now. Is Tiffany from 1987, and that song that it ends on is "Dreams" by the Cranberries in 1993. And I think that is the biggest indication that this was a movie set in 1993. Might have been, yeah. I mean, if you look at the fashion, like a lot of the cars in the background, like the technology when it's not nonsense or clearly a reshoot, uh-huh. they, they've jumped time periods yeah. here. And I think it's reflected in the songs that they probably paid for, yeah. and then later changed. And that's why the Album is just uh, just yeah. nonsense, but also specifically around 2003 and like 1993. Like that's the yeah, kind of era. And I think you're right in in the sense that if this were just a monster movie stalker slasher thing, you wouldn't need him to have the NSA technology no. or whatever because he'd just be magic. But I think that were like, well, we've got to justify it somehow. <laughs> I think he would just. And but but also in if if it were that they would have a reason to be connected to him, and he would know that by a magic or whatever it was, but because they are yeah. related, there needed to be some sort of element where they those three are connected to him besides just... Maybe he just bumped into them and went, that's them. Sure. Like, that's more believable than this, even. Yeah, maybe. Like, yeah. he ran into... He went looking for Cassie Webb and then he saw that they were all together for whatever reason. Yeah, or maybe... maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe... I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe he met all... Maybe he met all their parents... Kill them all. Maybe, well, yeah, maybe he, he made his way back to America and then all their parents touched the spider or something or tried to stop. Oh, they, they, one of them worked for customs and one of them worked for the taxi company yep. or whatever, and they all touched the spider and he's like, stay away from my spider, and then they were all connected by the web of fate and magic or whatever. Stay away from my spider, here's my dress. That's right. <laughs> Or he could just not be. He could move house, couldn't he? He could have moved house. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They would, ju- would have just not been able to find him when they went on their future murder spree. Yep. Uh, everything's over-explained. There's a moment where Cassie gets poisoned and, and she's like, hey, how are you poisoning me? It's like, we know he can do poison. We saw him do it earlier and now he's That's doing right. it again. Uh, there's a moment where Ben Parker calls Cassie when she's doing a big depression at home. And he's like, hey, Cassie. Do you mean she's on the toilet? Yep. Okay. <laughs> he goes, hey, Cassie, it's me again, Ben. <laughs> Anyways, this is why I'm calling, etc. And it's like you don't trust the audience yeah. to like recognize 
the yeah. one person she's friends with. Because she, she, I mean, Cassie, Madam Webb has an arc, which is that she, I guess the idea of why she's such a weird misanthrope is because she doesn't trust anybody because her mum, her mum went to the, the Amazon to research spiders before she died. Mm-hmm. And while she was pregnant, Cassie's like, well, I guess she didn't care about me at all. And then over the course of the movie, she learns that the reason why that was is because she was looking for a cure for the disease that Madame Webb had. Yeah. But then she's like, then, then when we see that, when she goes back in time and hugs her mum, she goes, oh, you were in the Amazon to look for a cure for me and you loved me and that's why you did it. And it's like, we, we saw it. You didn't have to. <laughs> yeah. You could just That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you could just have a have a look and go, oh. Yeah. You could even have a go, oh, oh. I get it now. And if you, the audience, are smart, you'll also get it. But if you don't, <laughs> Screen Rant will have an article about it. <laughs> They'll say, Madam Web Ending Explained. <laughs> Cassie was happy because she realized that her mother was trying to save her with yep. a spider. Article to recommend at the bottom, The Dark Knight Rises Ending Explained. Oh, you better believe it. That's right. <laughs> 2024. Yeah. It's a new article. Um, so there's a there's a Mary Parker baby shower, and it's very bizarre. Yeah. And if, even though there's a lot of other people there, it only seems to be her and Cassie interacting. Yeah. Everyone else is just on the fringes, but just being like, ooh. And then, and then exactly, ooh. and then and then Mary Parker's like, Cassie, what was your mother like? <laughs> you don't know. That her she mother's does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. Like, you don't. You don't do some research. You work with. You know Ben Parker. Is he your brother or whatever? Ben, did Ben not clue you in and go, hey, when you're doing the party games, don't mention motherhood to... I mean, I don't know why you've invited her, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, why would he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so then the questions keep coming. They do, don't they? they? Adam Webb, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes in different time periods because she's yeah, got the, right. the freaky time powers. Uh, CPR comes up a lot. This is how you do CPR. If I ever die, here's CPR. <laughs> That's you can right. do CPR on me. Yeah. Because um, you haven't done anything during this movie. Besides dance on a table and run around. Yeah. So I think you're going to need a hero moment. And I'm thinking it could be CPR. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll engineer a situation in which my heart stops and you can do CPR on me. <laughs> oh, you don't know? So I'll, I'll teach you CPR. I guess um, I uh, wanted to ask you about the final showdown. Okay, sure. Because uh, earlier on, there's a big fire at the explosion factory. That's right. And they have to go back to the explosion factory at the end for a, for a big showdown They're for like, we'll, some we'll, reason. We'll call, a, we'll call an emergency paramedic helicopter and we'll ask them to park on the top of the explosion factory. <laughs> and, I mean, sure, technically some of them will be like, wasn't there just a huge explosion in that explosion factory? Yeah. Did we... We were there. Wasn't there an ambulance driver killed at the explosion? Yeah, I don't think we should go to the explosion. I don't think we should land on the explosion. I think also, that's... there's a big sign we probably can't land here because there's a big Pepsi Cola sign. Yeah, yeah. And because of all the explosions, the building is probably not structurally sound. <laughs> and I bet, like on our helicopter map at the headquarters, there's a big X over it. It's, don't. And the X is just don't. Just don't. Just don't. <laughs> but anyway, so so they're 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 escaping from Evil Spider Man, and yep. they have and they say okay. We're going to have to escape. We're going to go into the fireworks explosion building and we'll get a helicopter from there. And they're like, okay, here's some flares. Yep. Just put them in all the boxes. That's great. Of fireworks. Yeah. When are they going to go off? Doesn't matter. Whose business is this? Doesn't Cause matter. Because sometimes they put a, a, a flare in there and it just sizzles for ages. And sometimes they put a flare in there and it just blows up immediately. Yeah, man. You're giving those to kids, are you? I mean, You're she insane. Knows. She can see the future. Oh, that's true. She can see the future. She can see the sometimes, future. Sometimes, um, depending. And sometimes you can control it. Sometimes that's she can't. True, yeah. yeah. Uh, so just oh god. So we also get a very um, well. It's interesting because I didn't oh, think I didn't think they were going to do it, but Madam Web becomes full Madam Web by the end, and by that I mean she's in a wheelchair and blind. She earns her blindness and and paralysis by taking a firework to the face yes. underwater. I don't know where the paralysis came in. Did something fall on her? I might I have know. just I might have just missed it. No, I don't know. Because when when she was in the wheelchair at yeah. the end, I went, oh, is this? Like a permanent thing? Is this, did this happen earlier? Big Birds of Prey energy. The Birds of Prey yes, TV series. The TV energy. series. That's yeah. exactly what I thought. Mm-hmm. And they're all living in a loft together and looking at a big themed window, yeah, yeah, yeah. spider themed window. And it was like, no matter what happens in the future, we're going to be together and we're going to be the Birds of Prey. Oh, I got the line. I actually wrote it down. Took out my phone. Whatever the future holds will be ready. And the thing about the future is it hasn't happened yet. And it won't. This is it. This, this is there won't over. Be one, yeah. <laughs> this is finished forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that she comes in and she's wearing the Madam Web. The big Oakleys. Oakleys and whatever. And she's like, I bought. And they're like, 
Ah, oh, you bought chicken for dinner. I knew that. Oh, how was your thing? I knew that. That would get real annoying. Oh, sure. And if they really wanted to drill home that, like, <laughs> you're going to tell me to dial it back because you find it annoying. <laughs> I like, won't. Like, we get it. She's now. I've finally found a personality of this and I hate everything. <laughs> so I'm going to go with it. She can see the future. Like, we get it. Mm -hmm. We absolutely get it. And they're all suited up at the end. In the, and But she has astral projection Doctor Strange powers? Yep. She also has, that happens too early. She gets punched out of her body. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Doctor Strange style. Yes. Um, is that a Madam Web thing? Sure. I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm just like, is this a specific thing that I'm supposed to like recognize and know? No, I guess, but they're like, no. but they're like, we got to find a way to get her emissions. If if we ever do another one of these, which we won't, she needs to be there to be able to do missions. So she's got astral projection powers. It's fine. Anyway, also there's the birth of Peter Parker, and they say, "Well, Uncle Ben, he's going to love being an uncle because when you're an uncle, there's no responsibility. <laughs> you get all that fun stuff. Yes. You don't have to." And I hope he doesn't get shot in Queens, a thing that uh, is alluded to much earlier in the That's movie. Right. Um, also, the, the, the responsibility line, I can't even remember who says it, but it's, when you take on responsibility, great power will come. That might have been that guy in the cave. It was the guy in the cave. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's true. So true. <laughs> Just, what are they doing? I'm going to say best movie ever because I had a wild time. I, I, I'm not going to say that. Okay, I, right would, I, I don't see this. Don't pay money for it. No, don't see you it. You shouldn't encourage watch it on streaming. this kind of behaviour. Yeah, what you should do, wait, for, wait till it's on streaming and get some friends together and watch it like that, yeah. I think. What do you think Sony's like? What did they think would happen? I don't know. With this? At what point did they know this was this movie? You know? It's a great question. Like, did they, they tried to fix it? Obviously, but. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But it's not. It's, 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 do you think they Because <laughs> it doesn't feel like at any point. Like, the action set piece at the end doesn't feel like. That feels like that was always the ending. It doesn't feel like. Because yeah. it's too big. Even for a lower budget movie, like for a lower budget movie, I think it's too big. big explosions, yeah. I, so it doesn't feel like at any point they were like, okay, at the ending. See, I, the end, I thought initially because uh, all the all the all the gals fall off the roof and they're all precariously hanging on for dear life, and it looks like they're all going to fall and die. And as you said, he, uh, Madam you Web can't has, save them all. Madam Web has to do the which one she's going to save, and then she's like, oh, actually, I'm going to do the I'm going to split into a bunch of different astral projections. And I'm going to save them that way. And I thought that's the moment where they would become spider women or whatever. Yes. You know, she'd be like, well, I don't have the powers, but you can have the, you know, do it like Buffy or, you yeah, know, yeah, the yeah. other ones where. They're already in there and they manifest. Yes, exactly. And then they maybe. would beat him up and then and then he'd be like, oh, no, I did this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, I caused the creation of these spider women and now they've killed me because I tried to kill them. So actually, you know, whatever. But they don't. They just, she, <laughs> she, she splits into the three beings and then she sort of helps them up slightly. Yeah. And then she just. Says, you're all right. That. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let's go. And that also feels like they worked backwards. They went, okay, how could, in the script, they went, how could she save them all? What if she splits into three? Yeah. You know, like a spider would. And then, oh, yeah. and then they were like, a spider into yeah, three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into three, so and they're like, well, that would be absolutely out of nowhere, wouldn't it? And so they're like, well, what if the guy in the cave says, yeah, you could be anywhere at once. You could be in multiple places at once yep. because of spiders. You know how spiders can do that? Yeah. You know how, yeah. A spider could be in a different place than another spider. Exactly. Yeah. But also, their web connects them all. Also, um, a few people pointed this out, but this is on Reddit from L L L L L L I zero, who said, uh, at the end of the film, Madam Web starts looking in the girl's future, and there's this scene where the camera pans up to a building, and it's the exact same scene from Spider-Man Two, where so Toby is running <laughs> and 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 jumps from building uh, from building. Oh, to building. it's like a sort of pan up shot. It's yeah, like, uh, like uh, is this Sony reusing footage or what? Yeah, must be. Yeah, almost okay. certainly. Oh. I could be a fun Easter egg, I guess. Well, I mean, that's period appropriate, isn't it? it? 2003, baby. Yep. Also, like, it's obviously not said any, in any of the Spider-Man universes because with the killer Spider-Man running around, nobody knows that's like, Spider-Man. Oh, Spider oh, wait, he's got a knife. Yeah. It's, and no webs. No webs. He's, oh, that's Mr. Jumps. <laughs> Look out. Yeah, if it was, if it was, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's not said anyway. Because they're all, cause if, if, if any of those kids were native New Yorkers, when they saw a guy crawling on the roof, they'd be like, they would yeah. go, that's a crawly man. Yeah. They'd go, they call him Ceiling Guy. I think it would be funny if Spider-Man was called Ceiling Guy <laughs> by everybody. Because you can't control it. No, you really you, can't. I mean, unless you hold a press conference and go, just so you know, Day I'm Spider-Man. Day one, yeah. If you were crawling on the ceiling, people would call you Ceiling Guy and yeah. you'd be that forever. <laughs> Even if you made a concerted effort to walk on the, on the ground, yeah. it would still be like, it'd be like, Ceiling Guy's on the ground yep. now. 
It's like oh. if, you, if your mum ran up to the school bus on the first day of high school because you've got your lunch and she gave you the lunch, you'd be mummy lunchbox man. You'd be mummy lunchbox man. For the rest of your life. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, we got some reviews here. This one's from Adam who says, Madam Webb, predictably terrible, but the best spun movie yet. The exchange between Anya and Maddie about friction, gravity and science will go down as one of the worst exchanges in comic book movie history. The turd in the wind <laughs> universe <laughs> marches on. I don't even remember what is – what's that friction gravity scene? I don't, I don't uh, know. I, don't I think know there that. might be a scene because uh, Madam Webb drives them. She steals a taxi. Oh, yeah. And she drives them all. Steals a lot of stuff. A lot yeah. of cars. She hits a lot of people with cars as well. Yeah. Uh, mostly evil Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they go into the forest, and I think the girls are sitting by a fire, and they're talking about how, how, he, how he crawls up the walls or something. That's fun. Yeah. Also, uh, they, they, um, the girls decide to go to a diner. Madam Webb leaves to do some stuff. She's yeah. doing a lot of, I've got to go. Stay here. I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to sort some stuff out. Uh, and the, the girls all leave to go to a diner and they leave their fire going. And I'm like, no, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. That causes forest fires. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Why does she pry the plates off her, the, the taxi? I think she could have just driven around and have nobody... Have you never would... done a crime, James, no, no, but then involving you're driving a taxi? Around, I think it's more obvious, especially in 2003, because mm-hmm. you'd have to ring in every taxi that you see. And nobody's actively looking for a taxi, really. Oh. So, like, it's more, if you didn't have plates, you'd be more likely to get pulled over, you'd think. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway, Benson Maid says, we're two months into 2024 and you've only reviewed three movies, Beekeeper, Argyle, Mad and Webb. I rank them. Number one, B. Number two, Webb. Number three, Argyle. Would you? Uh, Argyle is technically a better movie, sure. I would say, because there's clear direction and there's a point in action sequences and characters and stuff. Mm. Uh, but I don't know whether I had more fun in Argyle than this. I think there are elements to Argyle. I think there's a couple of action it's sequences Sam that Rockwell's are very great. In it. Yeah, but yeah. I think a lot of that, a lot of that's a real drag. Yeah. I think I think this is and somehow... And this didn't drag, did it, Mason? No, this is somehow less of a drag. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's more... I think it, for me it's more like this is fascinating than a good movie. Yeah, absolutely. Like, how did this get... What are we doing this now for? Uh, Vinton, I wish you could have a podcast, but what are we doing this now for? <laughs> Vinton says, I think Spum believes that making movies more comic booky means everyone's saying everything they're doing all the means everyone's saying everything that they are doing all the time and a no web Spider Man is boring to watch. Anyways, I can't believe this movie was made. There is a moment where Sims is trying to uh he's pursuing the gals or in Times yeah. Square or whatever it is. This is the villain Ezekiel Sims. That's correct. Yeah. Not the Sims. They're not no. being pursued by a box <laughs> copy of the Sims. Sure. Which would have been big in two thousand and three, I assume. Clearly agree. And he's on top of a car and he just he does a leap. Yeah. But it cuts instantly because it's like, where are you going to go? You are not leaping far enough to get onto any of those buildings. And you, you can't web. You can't web. So yeah. why know. couldn't he have webs? Why couldn't he? Why or a couldn't... rope or a grappling hook. Sure. The other guys have grappling hooks yeah. in the jungle, don't they? And vines and shit. Oh, yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, man. Yeah, give them a, give them a hook on a chain or whatever. Yep, give them a hook on a chain. And Sham says, Madam Webb was the exact wet fart you sort of expected to be. Zero action and dialogue so funny I almost couldn't stop laughing. Five of, the, five of the crowd also wasn't great. Really felt like nobody wanted to be there. How, how, was, how busy was your screen? I reckon there was maybe eight people in the cinema. Yeah, I had about the same. And I reckon I booked online about 20 minutes before it started. Yep. And there was nobody in the cinema. Oh, you would have been in for a treat. Yeah, but then when I got there, like, they had the old people roll in. Uh, sure, yeah. So there's probably eight people in total, including okay. me. I was the only one by myself. Some stuff got laughs in the theatre. I remember thinking that's actually kind of a funny line, and that's not bad. Sure. Look, I think I were you were you doing zingers? Is that how that that's, happened? But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's typical of you. Yeah. I love that. Well, like Mr. Jumps, I said, and yeah. everybody laughed. <laughs> woo woo! I don't know. I think Dakota Johnson's uh, in this is pretty fun. I think I think yeah, it's worth a free viewing. So when it's free, yeah, it's it, she's very say funny. It's not. It's not right. It's not the right There word. is a line of, uh, there, where she goes to the barbecue after she's drowned and she's like, uh, you know, they say uh, the, the, after you something, something cardiac arrest, but now I'm fine. Like yeah. the delivery was very funny. I couldn't tell you what I find it. Yeah, I find her delivery in general just so, like her cadence is so weird. And, sure, aloof. Okay, yeah. and like even her as a person, like it's the same. Yeah, yeah. That's what I find really She was in Fifty Shades of Grey, right? Yeah, she was. She was. Okay. She was Dorian Gray or whatever. Nice. Yeah, cool. All right, shall we move it along? Let's move it along. What a great movie. Good what? start to the year. Two bad movies two out bad of the game. Oh, incredible. What's So Dune 2 is in two weeks. Yeah, I forgot What that. are we going to do in the meantime? God, I don't know. Who knows, Mason? We'll have to figure it out. Great. I love that. What are we going to talk about next, though? 
What segment? Oh, it's what we're reading. Yep. What we're going to read. Here we go. I'm doing the thing. What are we reading today? What have you been doing, bro? I finished uh, watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And? I think it's very good. I, I agree. It's a good show. Good fun, a solid, look stylish. Uh, I, I enjoy very much how the season, it's a sort of, I think it maybe would have worked better week to week. Yeah. Because you got... There's some intrigue. There is some intrigue and you got... Mystery characters. I mean, I guess I could have, you know, exhibited some some discipline and actually watched one episode a week. But once in your bloody life. But why would I? They, yeah. were, they were compelling. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to keep watching. You were compelled. But um, I like how every episode was like a mission of the week. Yes. But it was also like a stage of the relationship. Yes, exactly. So there's an episode... And sometimes there'd be a huge time jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. there was an ep- there's an episode, for example, where they have... Ron Perlman's the guest star. Yeah. And they have to... They, they go to Europe and they have to safeguard him because people are trying to kill him. Beautiful Europe. Beautiful Europe. But I like how also the, that episode is about like that stage of a relationship where you're like, would we be good parents? Let's get a dog. Yes. And yep, Perlman yep. is the dog because he's like, <laughs> yes. he's, they've got to force him to take his pills. And he was a dog man in Beauty and the Beast he wasn't, or whatever. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and, and so he's like, I don't want to take my pills. I don't want to take <laughs> oh, my a cigarette. I pee myself. <laughs> And he's like, we'll give you a cigarette when you take your pill. And then he takes his pill. They're like, give you a have, cigarette when you pee yourself. We don't have any cigarettes. I thought, it was, I, I thought every, yeah. like, I, I enjoyed, like, I thought the, the structurally the whole season was very yeah. good. Their dynamic is terrific. I agree. And just, like, the flaws that, like, the, they highlight for both the characters. The action's really fun. And, like, you're like, oh, people are getting hurt. It seems like people are really getting hurt. That's great. That's what we love. It's not that this is relevant, but do you think it's actually set in the, the Mr. and Mrs. Smith 2005 universe? Oh, Could it be? Do you think there's going to be a, a Piss and show Lee? I mean, I doubt it. Because no, they would, that's not a good They're very situation. much on the outs for, um, for a bunch of reasons. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I like that they jumped straight into the, the fact that, they're just a couple and they know they're spies. It wasn't this kind of like, when are they going to find out the other one's a spy mm. or whatever? Like, there is yep. that distrust between them, but it's still, you know. Yeah. It, it It's just it's just a very interesting and well I think plotted so. out show. I hope there's a second season. Me too. Because it does end on a cliffhanger. It certainly does. But, uh, yeah, also, like, they meet some other Smiths in this, they and do, I think yeah. that's a really interesting dynamic. And who are they? Is one of them... One of them's the guy from Narcos. The other one's Poe... Parker Posey. Parker Posey. Yeah. yeah. you gotta, you got to... One of those. There's a Parker Posey, but there's also a Posey Parker who's a different figure. A di- oh, that's right. Yeah, an awful woman. An awful woman. Yeah, yeah she's just awful. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but it's Parker Posey. Uh, and yeah, yeah, great guest stars. Yeah. Uh, Paul Dano. Every week a, there's a, somebody showing up. Yeah, and, right. And you're like, oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Sharon Holden's oh, really? In Must song. be nice. Must be. Oh, The Rocketeer was in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's fun. There's some great looks. Because you asked me who, who that guy was going to be, yeah. and I'm like, I shan't be spoiled. Yeah. Yes. But um, there's some great fashion stuff in this as well. I agree. Which I'm absolutely loving. It's absolutely loving. Uh, yeah. yeah, just a real, just a delightful show. That's right. And um, you've been watching something else, yeah? I've been watching Master of the Universe while I finished it. Revolution, which is the sequel series to the last Kevin Smith series. Which was Revelation. Yes. So okay. it's a shorter series, and they kind of, it's more He-Man focused if people are like, there's not enough He-Man in it, which I can also understand. Uh, but this is yeah more He-Man centric, and it's and Hordak shows up and he's Hordak. Like, I'm mixing, I'm bringing technology into He-Man's universe and whatever. Wow. And uh, I I really like it. I think it's a, like a really good interpretation, and it does also feel like a sequel to the original because you see again weird characters and vehicles show up sure, and, yeah. and whatever, and and the universe also moves forward. So like people figured out who He-Man is and now it's just known, you know, and it's stuff like that. It's not, it doesn't go back to the status quo. Yeah. It's a universe that is constantly like, does he ever then, evolving. does he ever then transform back into Prince Adam? Or is yeah, that no he'll point? still do it. He'll do oh, it. Okay. Every now and then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah Battle must, cat. Yes. It must be tiring to be He-Man all the time. No, he loves it. Okay. He loves it too. Sure. So yeah, I, um, if you, maybe like, if you want to get through a narrow doorway or sure. go transform back into Prince Adam. If you like the first season, this is, I think, the good continuation. Okay. And if you watched it but didn't like it, I think there's things in this which, if you, which is more original He-Man, which I think you could get on board. Sounds like there's some for it. I, I like the first series though, so I, I do also. Watch. And I like the voice cast. It's a great voice cast. Mark Hamill is Skilly Tor. That's true. And others. Yes. William Shatner's in it. Oh. Uh, yeah. So that's fun. As himself. Yes. How did I even get here? <laughs> Weird Shatner. vehicles. Mm. Uh, what else have I been? I don't know what you've been. Oh, I got, the, I got the deluxe hardcover edition of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, my God. Why give, would you do it? I love it. I don't know. I can't get enough of that series. Could I have it? You don't want it. You'd throw it away. This was the original, yeah? Yes. Great. Yeah. 
Can I see it? I don't have it here. Just to get my greasy hands on it. I guess. I'll bring it over next Yeah, cool. Thanks. I'm going to grease it up. All right, should we move it along? Time for letters. Time for letters. Time for letters. Time for letters. The classic one was the letters, the oh, letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only gonna take my way. We're gonna hear right now, we're gonna do letters. You know what's coming up? What's that? This week on Caravan of Garbage, we're finally doing The Last Airbender, Caravan of Garbage, which was recorded in 2020. Okay. Uh, or something like that. Sure. Um, what's really, what was really scary about bringing this to the modern day, Mason, oh, yes. was that I thought I'd lost the file <gasps> and I thought I was going to have to watch it again and then re-record the whole thing. And I'd have to watch it. And you'd have to watch it again too and I'd have to resurrect. Oh. So I had to basically find an old laptop, which was two laptops deep, because you know I just make a pile of old laptops. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And crack that open and one of the hard drives is corrupted, so I had to fix it and like manage to get it working for long enough to get the original file off. And now it's, it's, <laughs> now it's happening this yes. way. So there you go. Uh, it's it's done. It's what's well, happening. Ben and Lawrence are currently editing it. Uh, anyway, if you want to reach the show, you can hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. That's hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. That's or right. shoot a Gmail to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail dot com. Is that right? I think so. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what do we got? Uh, here's an email from I think I think I'm going to pronounce it Skyler. Skyler. Uh, who emails in and said, uh, "Madam Web made my girlfriend sick." My girlfriend and I decided to watch Madam Web on Valentine's Day. Congratulations. Mainly because we wanted to make fun of it because there's no way it wasn't going to be terrible. But we were blown away by the swinging camera angles and constant mini flashbacks that were so nauseating, causing my girlfriend to get motion sickness, so we had to leave. However, we left right when started. We left right when stuff started happening in the third act. Was it good? Should I go back and watch it or wait for a clip to come out on YouTube? Uh, no, the don't, second thing. Don't, don't. The second thing. Don't pay well, that's more another money. Thing. That didn't that didn't factor into my viewing at all. But it's interesting to know that some people are going to get motion sickness yeah. from this movie. From a movie that's already bad. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. No, it? absolutely. If, if you if you skipped our review of this, yeah, uh, to get to the letters for some reason, yeah, uh, yeah, don't just just uh, wait till it's free. Or stuff will come out on on YouTube. Yeah, or, so it, stuff is already coming out on YouTube. I'm pretty sure. You get it also. Like you got that far. You get it. You get it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. If if you were like, oh, the third act's going to have an incredible. It's going to be something we've never seen in a superhero movie before. No. Yeah, that's fun. It is fun. It's from Ed Day. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. What if the twist of the new Jurassic Park slash world is that the as that it's a new park and everything is fine. Everyone has a good time. <laughs> get a novelty pencil case from the shop. That sort of thing. I love that. I would love a Jurassic Park experience like that though. If Jurassic Park was real, that's how I would want it to go. Like, I'm not okay. running and getting picked up by a pterodon. Do you think they would do... Pterodon. Do you think they would, if you paid extra, they would do, a, like, a, a sequence where it seems things are going out of place? Oh, yeah. Why do they do that for the new movie? They're like, okay, sure, we'll remember the old Jurassic Parks, and every time we built a Jurassic Park, there was a yes. disaster. It's like the Gremlins ride at Movie World. Yes, exactly. Where, like, you right. think it's a, you're watching a movie, but it's yeah. actually the Gremlins have got loose. Yeah. And I, what if they were like as a PR thing in the movies? They're like, well, you know, well, what are you, if you pay X, $100, you get to be in the scene where everything goes wrong. You know, just imagine imagine being back there or whatever, and then everything does go wrong. I'd be up for that. That's but cool, I'd right? also just rather a good movie where there's not a Jurassic Park, where yeah. all the dinosaurs are doing a Mad Max. Well, I mean, we're at Jurassic World now. Exactly. I mean, we're supposed to be there. We're supposed to be in the Jurassic World. <sighs> yeah. What do you got, Mason? Uh, this is from Alistair. Alistair? Letterbox-related question for the boys. There we go. Let's ask because we're the boys. That's true. Like the show. Uh, hello, little sweet men from the podcast. We're regular. So I don't know if you've seen these interviews Letterbox does on various red carpets where they ask actors, filmmakers, anyone, what their top four movies are all time are. If you two were ever in that situation, what top four movies would you choose and why? We don't have to choose four. Just uh, what? Off the top of my head? I, would, I, I mean, if, if I were in that situation, I would do it in advance. Oh, totally. I'd have to, if, if there was ever a chance I'd be on a red carpet for anything, I would watch red carpet stuff and I would do extensive You'd research on who's going to show up and be like, what are they going to ask? Eat this hot sauce. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I would t test run all the hot sauces. Yeah. Also, if I was ever in the Criterion closet, I would go through the Criterion list Beforehand. days in advance. And I would pick out and a And then what if you can't find them in the day? I'm, I'm probably the alphabetical. Yeah, I'm What I'd if cry. they were random? 
It might be by filmmaker of Alphabet. Oh, my God. So I'd have to remember them, but I'd also have to remember the filmmaker's name. I hate that. Yeah, I hate that also. They got all the uh, Marvel movies in there? Yeah. Then I just picked those. There's a Marvel section, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. It's towards the bottom. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, uh, Butch Cassidy's the Sundance Kid okay. uh, is up there for me. Yeah. Uh, the movie Sunshine, Danny uh-huh. Boyle, is yeah. one of my favourite movies. There's two. What do you got? Uh, I would do Soderbergh Ocean's Eleven, I think. That's a good movie. I think that's a good movie. Uh, and then that uh, three more times. <laughs> But not the sequels? No. Not the three sequels? No. Oh, my God, there are three sequels. You could. Aren't they? You could. And there's a prequel on the way, maybe. I go Robbie and... I, I want to say Ryan Gosling, but that can't be right again, can it? Ooh. It can't be right again. It can't be right again. I'll give it a quick goose. Yeah, give it a quick goose. Uh, yeah, I would have to do, I'd have to do extensive research. I'm amazed that people can... And, and it's also becomes this sort of... I mean, I guess it's only for a day. If somebody comes up with four yeah. kind of like... Non or to like if somebody comes up with two, it is Ryan or Robin. There you go. Yeah. It, it, if somebody comes up with like two, like four really obscure art house movies, everybody's like, boo! These those can't be your real favorite movies. Boo! Yeah, exactly. Where's Batman? Or Where's whatever? Batman eighty nine? Exactly. But and if somebody's like, oh, I love um, well actually I love Toy Story and I love Toy Story two and I love Moana and I love whatever people like. Boo! I like Moana. Yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah. 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 Everybody's like, boo, think of a – where's Batman? <laughs> Any yeah. of them. Yeah. God. Where's David Lynch June for some reason? What is your favourite comic book movie? All time? Yeah. Iron Man 1. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. I'm happy it? to uh, – I would even say, like – People would say The Dark Knight, the Heath Ledger's performance alone. That is a good movie. You might say the movie Joker. Yeah. God, is it Iron Man? I mean, cause it, is that because that's a that's pure comic book movie? Yeah, and because they tried the hardest, I think, as well. <laughs> you don't think they tried in The Dark Knight? Oh, okay. no, I would include that as well. I, look, I think they're... I think they're so now you start to laugh, oh. Bicycle Thieves, and I love Le Samurai, and I love uh, I love Before Sunrise, but I also love Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. What if that was my four? <laughs> this is a newer one, but The Suicide Squad is really great. I feel like yeah. that's similar that to is, Iron yeah. Man in the sense that, like, mm. you've nailed every element of this. Because they and had the, to, and the comic, and, Yeah, and the, even though I made no money, and the comic book element. Here's one. Look, I think Batman Begins, I don't know if it's better than The Dark Knight, but uh-huh. Batman Begins is, like, it's a phenomenal movie. Yeah. And at the start of a new universe, and there was so much, like, potential of which direction this could go. Yeah. And then it's just all crap after that, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Winter Soldier's good. Is that up there? X-Men, Days of Future Past, The Rogue Cut. Oh, yeah. Kick-Ass. These are all good movies. I don't know. Maybe it is Iron Man. Interesting. All right, Mason. Got this one from Ethan who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, so there's an article at comicbookmovie.com where they talked about there's going to be a G.I. Joe Transformers crossover. Oh, that's right. And Ethan says, does this mean that Rise of the Beast was ineligible for last year's The Game is On Award? What are the point after covering other movies in the franchises? Does that mean Snake Eyes will finally have to be covered? Okay, so I went to this article and I'm like, what are they actually saying about the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover that was hinted at lovingly? And um, so they spoke to Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, who's also talking about Madame Web at the moment, but he also produced the Transformers movie, some uh-huh. of them. And, he's, and asked about the G.I. Joe crossover. He said, the honest truth is I don't know. I know we are going to deliver on the promise we made. So he didn't say we're going to make it. He said... I don't know, and uh, but I know we're going to deliver on the promise we made. And I don't think they are necessarily going to deliver on it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I think that kind of didn't that kind of landed with a wet thud, that whole situation. And that movie didn't do as well as they probably wanted it That's to do true. outside of merch. Mm. So, uh, but it, it, if a movie does end up getting a sequel, a Game Is On movie, does that invalidate it? No, I don't think so. Okay, great. Because the Madam Web is obviously up there this year. Oh, boy. We've got two already. Yeah. The two movies that we've gone to the cinemas and reviewed specifically have both the game is on us. That's so true. Anything else? Uh, let's find one more. James. All righty then. Yeah. I'm Mace Ventura. It's... All righty. Oh, Hello. yeah. Ooh, okay. This is from Jeremiah. Jeremiah was an email. email guy. Email doing an email. What's his deal? Can you know? A letter about bad movies by good directors. Because we were talking earlier about these guys who wrote a bunch of bad movies, but they can't be that bad. I love good movies. Right? Yeah. Hey, boys. First off, thank you so much for the years of last. I found the show during lockdown and it quickly became the soundtrack to walks with my dog down deserted roads, filling out job applications, driving to job interviews. And eventually, oh. many breakdowns at my new job at a mental health clinic. It's just giggling breakdowns. I'm loving My question is, what are some of your least favourite movies by directors who you otherwise think are great at what they do? 
I was recently watching every Coen Brothers movie and was stunned how bad The Lady Killers was. Oh, The Lady Killers. I remember that. Tom Hanks. Yeah. It's a remake, I think. Yeah, it is. Not just by the standards of a pair who have directed six or seven certifiable modern classics, but in general, are there any movies that left you in a similar headspace of what the hell are you trying to pull off here, man? Ocean's 12. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, there, it's Lady, the original Lady Killers had Alec Guinness. Oh, yeah. Um, so Danny Boyle did a hypnosis movie. Was that recently? Yeah, like it's called it's called Hypnotic. Trance or Hypnotic or something like that. And it's and it's got a guy being – oh, it's Ben Affleck's in it. No, it's a oh, different one. okay, right. This is the James a James McAvoy Aff- one. There's a Ben Affleck movie where they're like, that guy's a hypnotic. you got to watch out. He's going to do a hypnotic on you. You know? It's not that one, but I hear uh, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's not a good movie, okay. I would say. What about you? What's, what's uh, else? Let me think. Uh, who's a great director? I think Ridley Scott is a great director, but then he made that Robin Hood movie. And I know people have <laughs> said uh, he hasn't made anything good recently, but I think he has. Mm. If you look at, like, apparently Gladiator 2 is really good. Have you yeah, seen that? Have talking. I seen it? Have, have I seen, seen it? Gladiator 2? Yeah, it's pretty good. Second yeah, it's pretty good. I saw it, you know, way in advance. And? He sent me a dish, uh, you know, an, an advanced copy. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Because he did The Martian, and he did... What else did he do that was good recently? Uh, oh, he did The Last Duel? Yeah. He did that? Oh, I hate Looper. Brian you do Jones hate Looper. Looper. Yeah. But you love The Last Jedi. Yes. Yes. Yes, James. <laughs> yes. That's interesting that you hate Looper, a good movie. No? How about this? Yes. I think The Force Awakens is pretty good, what it's supposed to be. Sure, okay. I'm saying great, uh-huh. but then... The Rise of Skywalker was absolutely fucking atrocious. Mm. And that's the same director. And those are oh. two movies. Yeah. What about if you looked at, like, you know Favreau made Iron Man, your favourite movie? I do. What are some Favreau movies? Like, you hated The Lion King. That would I be a good, that yeah, would be that's a good, right. That would be yeah. a good one. Example. That is slop. That is I was going to say, like, Cowboys and Aliens, but there's some elements of fun to Cowboys and Aliens. That's true. From memory. That's a good question, though. I don't love, I don't love a lot of stuff, Kubrick. Is it anything he's done? Right? Anything? I don't know. I don't know if I. What do. about sexy eyes wide shut? No, I don't like it. No. What else do you? What else do you not like of his? I don't really like The Shining. No. No, I, like I don't the like it. I don't like. Let's let's go through his. Uh, let's do it now. Okay. I don't really like 2001: A Space Odyssey. I like that. Okay. Uh, do you like? I do like Full Metal Jacket. Yep. Okay. What about Lolita? I have not seen it. I've not seen it either. Uh, I don't want to rent that. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's... Exactly. Uh, what if, I, was I like say, Barry Lyndon and I like Full Metal Jacket. I haven't seen Barry Lyndon. pretty much everything else is a miss for me. Spartacus oh, I Doctor s- Strangelove. Okay. Spartacus I saw years ago. I uh-huh. couldn't tell you anything about it. You're right. What about AI, Artificial Intelligence, but the Steven Spielberg one? I'll hate it. I don't yeah. like it. Because that was supposed twee. to be Twee. So Twee. It's Twee. Yeah. It's Barry Lyndon at Lyndon about. Uh, British Rogue. That's right. Cool, man. Oh, Ryan O'Neill. Cool. Have I seen Doctor Strange, love? You've seen parodies of Doctor Strange. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen it on The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. You've seen Paths of, Paths of Glory, Paths of Glory? Paths of Glory? No. Paths of Glory? No. Mm. I've seen Balls of Fury. And? Goodness gracious. Yeah. Great That's Balls it. of Fury. That's exactly right. Should we? Let's wrap it up. Yeah, man. Madam Webby Rary. We did it. It's come to an end. Yep. Forever. Yes. Unless we want to keep it rolling. We could watch it again. I mean, we'll probably end up doing a commentary on it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then we'll eventually do the spum caravan of garbage. We could do it next week. We could just do it in the cinema. Yeah, we could. Because it's it's going to be second week of, of Matter Web, so we could just go in there and there'll be nobody else. Yeah, bring in the recording equipment. That's we'll very, pay for extra seats. That's bold of equipment. you to assume that um, it's still going to be playing. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for listening. We absolutely appreciate it. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast because that is how we get new listeners. It's true. And thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcatcher of choice. You can just do it in app. And if you do so, James will read out your review. And guaranteed, even if we stop doing the podcast, James is going to have to keep doing reviews. Yep, that's right. This one's from Jin Harbour who says, five stars, thanks. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Thanks for all the laughs ever since I hate I hate clicked one of your red circle arrows pointing videos in 2015 and was surprised by two funny gentlemen with fun. I got a lot of people that way, Mason. Yeah. With fun, casual banter. My only complaint is James is a coward for changing my favourite part of the podcast intro song. No, I didn't. No, oh, I didn't. Interesting. That's very interesting. This one's from Setma, who says, Amazing 100% of the time. 80% of the time. Comic, uh, come for the Red Hot comic book movie news straight into your butthole and stay for the da na 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 what are we, Westworld today? And no, I did not have a mild stroke while writing this. I'm glad. I don't That's even good. know what you're talking about. I'm reading that and I don't know what you mean. 
<laughs> I don't know what you mean. Folks, if you want to get in, if you want to get into contact, if you want to get in, us, you want to get in. You've got to, get to, get you you to be in it to win it. That's so true. Mm. If you want to get in contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanet at gmail dot com. You can go Woo. to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group and the Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord for fun, civil chats about podcasts and pop culture of all kinds. Uh, if you want to follow some people on the socials, you should follow our friend Rob actually. Collins. He's at Rob Collins on Twitter. He's at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. He'll keep you updated on all things The Weekly Planet. You can yeah, follow man. me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and uh, Nick Maso on Instagram. James is a Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Speaking of the uh, Facebook group, thank you to uh, Sarabi and Maisie and Fidel for keeping it all yeah. rolling along in there. You don't mind? I don't mind at all. Yeah, because you were talking to me about shutting it down. Yeah. Like, do you want to? Because wanna... there's a big button. Yeah. You can just push the button and it's like, do you really want to want to delete it? I didn't even think it asked. I think it just deletes just immediately. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Mm. Uh, folks, if you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies, chucking a barker on amount. You would not miss it for one away. We don't mind. That's right. Or you can go to bigsandwich.co, $9 per month, US. Yeah. Talk about that inflation. Uh, and uh, it's, no, it's, it's always been 9 US. Yeah. Um, for now. That's, that's exactly right. Bonus podcasts, early videos, movie commentaries, video game let's plays, This week we've got a Roadhouse movie commentary. That's right, Adelaide. Oh, Roadhouse that might one. be coming out soon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's fun. Some Roadhouse developments this week about the, everybody involved in Roadhouse or the high, or the, the creatives took more money to maybe put it on streaming. Oh, okay. And so when Doug Lyman was like, well, this should have gone to whatever, but he hasn't said anything about it yet, so I don't know. Oh, initially, he was like, I'm boycotting this because of whatever. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. We'll talk about it. But you think this is below This is below board? This is. Uh, I don't know. What's happening? Yeah. I don't know. Movies? That's right. Uh, I'm only you're... forced to watch them for work. That's right. <laughs> Uh, you want a t-shirt? You go to tpublic.com. You search for the Weekly Planet. Thank you to the Bruce and the Basilisk and Rackham for a musical theme. Yes. Next week, a different thing. We're going to watch Madam Web again. Yep, that's right. We're just going to we're going to watch it on Twitter in in little snippets. Or somebody will be like, hey, "Whatever man is Madam Web in its entirety." Yep. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Have you ever Googled your own name? Prepare for.